like that. Oh, why not put on a cardigan? <laughs> <laughs> that was the cardigans. <laughs> and for what it's worth, a lovely chin there. Uh, oh, that's a joy. <laughs> we should definitely talk like that one. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Liberty <laughs> Vice, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton, alright? Alright. Yeah? All right. Well, we got a, a jam packed show today. Go on. We got, we got, oh. We got so many feet. We got more features than Carl's got on his face, <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah, very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little That's where I've seen him before. More. I'll take heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Rockbusters. That's that's Have we? still no, going strong. Feelings on that. No, but he's, 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 he's said he's going to um, buck his ideas up. We've got oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got uh, Khan in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. It was my favourite thing we've done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what's, uh, uh, can we say what the film is? And we... Excuse my French, we've got some bloody great music. Oh, pardon me, moi. Wow, I don't know, I guess to be French. <laughs> I was going to well, I'll just give you a, a taste. We've got Oasis, Cardigans, you just heard there. We've got Lloyd Carl, we've got a bit of Pretenders coming up, Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play you some TJ's fan club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What should we have now? Oasis. Go on, eh? Yeah. Brilliant. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. Of a Saturday. Yes, thank you. XFM 104.9, Look at your face, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you should, we should, uh, do the competition, the, the, uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature, isn't it? Do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. It's so, it's so yeah, good, it's we, should, we should tease it out of them. Well, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've... Sure. I haven't really... Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. It was and, uh, amazing I asked piece of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe say, mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? I'll tell you what though, I did. What? Are you, how are you looking at? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't I seem to say that, it's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, he, um, hasn't, he hasn't. He's, he's got, got an he's had two, he's had two face. nose jobs. Yeah. And you're looking I, at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, it's, it, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a... It is quite a, um, petite sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' <laughs> hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? What? You can't accuse him of being a tranny? No, he's not. No, I'm, no he's not. What a are you saying? No, no, he's not. He's got not. enough issues, now you're accusing him of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came like that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really, I really felt sorry for him. Um, and, uh, no, I think, he cleared up a few things, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work. But, um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just going around just taste. pointing. I know it's, it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything, sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if, it, yeah, I mean, and if it sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those, uh, Porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of what transvestites. Well, what is like it about his hands? Well, well, you, know, you know when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he, he decides to uh, turn transvestite about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know what right. I mean? That way, he's got a twin set of pearls and he goes, I've never felt so comfortable. But his hands are still big, he's got a little wig, and he's got the lipstick on, and he's with his teenage kids who are going, kill me. Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that well, why he was wearing that glove? He must be, yeah, exactly. Be yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hands. It would help him climb the trees. It is, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it's, you know, it was alright. But, um, like that got a load of attention in the press. But, the Trisha programme got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, was like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, 
You watch it at ten o'clock. So think you've been preparing, preparing this show. Most people we'll go to work about eight or nine. You watching Trisha and that? I said no. What is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um, Freaks. Was it? Um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak. Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again because they repeat stuff on ITV two. Right. So I, I had my dinner late. <laughs> Like, instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do, yeah. I had it at like two thirty. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV two. Um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what? what I think, you think you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, okay. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam, right? right. And, anyway. and, and that doesn't exist anymore. No, it's so conjoined, Carl. Yeah, get the phrase right. But you think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. You think that's Siamese your twins? I'd say, well, that's yeah. Let's now, were you stunned it. by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Because right. they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh. God. Sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There was a, a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slow open, slow dribble, <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know what I mean? That, like when a cat sees a bird land on the balcony, <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it, 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 it can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> Surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? <laughs> um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. ...what would happen? <laughs> How would <laughs> handle that? It's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what did he talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... I guess what I did today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Brass in pocket, and if uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. That's Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined twins. No, it's just one of them, of course, had to be because one of them was sort of shorter than the other and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other. By this the other isn't thing. Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not. Called, one's called Reba. And oh, I forget what the other one's called. Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you uh, remember, Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It was just <laughs> yeah. So you immediately <laughs> put them out of your mind. <laughs> Those are rubbish names. I'm just, uh, forget, 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 cough, forget, were they, forget were, them. They're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, oh, I've seen some American ones. Well, like bizarrely, Jason. one of them was a, apparently, a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly. Well, they're not called the Molly and Dolly. The one that joined at the Oi. The one that joined they're not, the... I think you've made up the Molly and no, Dolly. No, it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that sits on a seat and the other one carries it round, uh, her round. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called, well, we know that one of them's called Reba and I forget the other one. And one of them's a country and western singer or something. Yeah, and one of, but she was saying, yeah, I've just, uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly <laughs> in theatres. <laughs> Is your and sister the other doing one, it? Yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> I did, uh, it's utterly bizarre because they they live they they work so hard to live their lives separate. Yeah, they say oh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course, so, yeah. You know they don't, they try not to. So so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's I weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer back or, vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we're sort of being horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, really no, we're not. No, no, we're laughing at Carl's amazement at, at this phenomenon. Sorry, I, I just got to say we're not. We're not 
do you know, know taking another, the mickey. The really weird thing about all this, right? What? And it's annoying because you were saying about, mm. you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of course then, you didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat and, and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted? That's what was... he said, one of them, <laughs> I don't, don't quiz me on it, but that's, <laughs> that's what was, that's what was said. Hello there, I'm a, <laughs> hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? L I'd love to adopt a children. I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you ten thousand dollars towards well, your, well, uh, well, your well, orphanage. Oh, well, well, we'll through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm an interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any They're more. Sisters, they're sisters, they, uh, they're I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really need one. Now, break up, there's the, there's the rub, you see. Sure, because, sure. Um, you just need the one. It's ten thousand dollars now, you can have that, I'll sign it now, but okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it for I'll bring it around, I'll bring it around. Brilliant, Okay, okay. ding dong. Hi, yeah, brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah, there she is there. That's a joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah, do you wanna, can you bring her out? No. Me? It's like, there's, it's like, there's nothing behind the bush, so just, you just want- I just want, want, I want to be able to, I just want to be able to walk 360 degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I, I can't believe it! What's that little trolley? <laughs> She's talented. Oh dear. You're oh. talking nonsense, Carl. Well, whatever. <laughs> These ideas are nightmares with white cameras whose first fear was the child with dyed hair and black hair and yeah, yeah. Feeder. It's just the way I'm That's it, just the way I'm feeling. XFM. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the the newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, it was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To uh, a great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with The Graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room and, um, he's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead set, Mrs. Robinson. Well, there we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Thank you, then. What? Will you bring me a hand? A what? Hang Tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I, I never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come oh, that was a joy. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's oh. bought it for six ninety nine on VHS. It'll be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at you... Carl's face. He's got it. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. 
So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap, I understand. I know. Right? I know. And, uh, it's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's not? An, it's an old film, so. <laughs> So the quality is, is, do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. Of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. An old Bitamax copy <laughs> that someone had knocking about. Uh, well anyway, you it's can- the same film though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, okay, well yeah, you're right. Yeah, so anyway, film, yeah. you can win, uh, six ninety nines <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's Ricky, dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. Ricky dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from the- I would love to. It would seem appropriate. Yeah. Hello darkness, my friend. Dear Mr. Simon and Mr. Garfunkel, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. <laughs> uh, I think what? you should do every single link. <laughs> but it's the best bit of the show. <laughs> uh, so, on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have time go. to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you're- Some just people are not listening to the question. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll, we'll play it again at about two then. And personally, any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was- uh, I think- I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the, uh, Yeah, the you have to get it, you have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind the scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 699 version. Yeah, and on so, VHS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to- you're gonna have to waste that now, cos yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you twice as much as it would've done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable <laughs> lesson learned. Yeah. Have, I re have I rewound it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. They're, still, they're gonna win a DVD. No, I looked at the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go and get it! Quid for and it. claim it back! No, you've gotta wait What ages. a cheap station this is. It's outrageous. I mean- Oh. Well, do you want to go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, We don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really cleaning out, cleaning <laughs> yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I- Cause we've sort of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit in it <sighs> now, isn't there, that audio bit? You're selling it, you're big, a big sell. Oh, we have not gone straight into that yet, though. There's a no, DVD, no, no, no. there's a DVD there, what's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick, I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited, So, uh, who did, uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he, uh, take and what actress played opposite him? Um, that's ricky.gervais. xfm.co.uk. Sure. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Is that it then? We'll what we got? Oh, coming up, we got some... Bit, play a bit of Coldplay? Let's have a bit it. of Coldplay, be right. Yellow on XFM 104.9. Get it on DVD, it's an embarrassment. Seven quids worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. They've put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Well, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkey thing. Ooh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out, Last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party. Yeah. Steve was there. Yeah. Got talking about stuff. Um, and a debate that we didn't really finish cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, right. I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys. Um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate, it's true. It will not happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a time, right? They would do, they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no getting to it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close, did Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. 
Yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a mathematical well, infinity. Well, we've sort. heard your side of the argument, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one. But let's hear Carl because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week. Yeah, so what's your problem? Some strong what's your problem with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey. That's it depends. That can live forever. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter with an infinite amount of time. He would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one monkey. What do you mean, monkey. what, what, you mean, the, Let, uh, employment laws, what can... do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out, please. Okay. If it's one monkey. <laughs> yeah. With a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't, it's not- Keep it's, going! Crying. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like, it's like if you have too many, what's that saying about too many chefs Too many spoil? chimps spoil the soup. Right, well it's the same thing, it's like, well I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it, I was gonna put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying uh, is- I, I, I'm just leaving, I can't be bothered I want to hear, I want uh, to hear it, This blows my mind, he doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just that I just don't think it will happen. What I mean, do you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you. By definition. Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They, in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount, uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type, that works with Shakespeare an infinite amount of times and everything else an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not, that's just, that's, that's not as- But not, not Shakespeare. Oh! Shut up! You, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of rankings, infinite number of typewriters, they will type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play a record, said, no, I'm, I'm not having this conversation. Not I'm not having it, I'm not having it, because it really, really winds me up. But you're saying they'll do it with no spelling errors. Well, they do it, uh, they do it an infinite amount of times. And they do it, they do it wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they spell, uh, the last full stop. Uh, wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it and they get one thing wrong in Hamlet wrong an infinite amount of times. They do everything an infinite amount of times. But are they going off a story that they've- Play a record, Carl, cause <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out! I'm just saying- Shut up! Do they know the story? Oh, they're gonna... monkeys! Oh, Christ. No, right. okay. Oh, Carl, this Like Carl, she's a girl and I'm a man. Good that, innit? On XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. As yeah. ever, Rick, there's always someone who steps in to defend Carl. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what is the defence? What is the defence? Here's a, an email from Scott Coomer. He says, Carl is actually right. I've got an A-level in statistics and probability. It doesn't matter how long they have and how many monkeys you have, you cannot guarantee they would type the complete works of Shakespeare. Infinity makes it probable they, they would get it right, but not definite. Yeah. Well, y yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. No. No, you weren't saying, Carl. You don't understand it. Infinity sort of sorts it out. That if they do, if they do, if they do anything, they they nearly do everything, won't they? No, I mean, they'll give it a good shot. Like that. <laughs> no, that's not the point. But, but the I'd point is I'd be surprised if they did one page right. Right, listen. <laughs> it's not to do with consciousness. It's not to do with them aiming. They are it's, just bashing away it's at like, the keyboard. It's, it's like they're, they're, they're used to show that there isn't consciousness. They, they, they chose the chimpanzee because it can type, presumably, it's because, hit the keyboard. It's because they hadn't come across you at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to take out thought out of it. It's to take out reason and trying, right? It's just random. They're saying that if you typed enough things, if a computer was left as a type in everything, if you left it for an infinite amount of time, and they chose Shakespeare because there is meaning behind it, and it's difficult to get it exactly right, to show you that Infinity would come up with a sh it's not just Shakespeare, it's every novel. It's everything. Fairly eloquent there from Gervais. A quick repost please from Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, I'm just saying what I don't understand, if it hasn't read it, then how does uh, it know where it's gone? Oh! I, listen, right, I, okay, listen, right, I, I, I can can't, I, can I, just, look, can I just explain to people, right, some people have said, oh, why are you cruel to Carl? He drives me mental with things well, like that. What do you mean, well? Well, can I just, well, let me just, just, you just, you just take a breather. How do I do your editing? 
He keeps coming in the week. You know that I work here properly, <laughs> yeah, in the week, don't I? <laughs> yeah. I've got a proper job, yeah? Yeah. Uh, should be nine to five, but I normally get in at about eight o'clock and work A lot of people eight. get in at eight o'clock. Working hard, trying to do my job. Three times this week, I've been rushing around, I walk past my little studio, he's sat in there, all right? <laughs> now, because I've got this sort of job, I can get away with it. I said to him, if I was a doctor, <laughs> would he keep coming to me practice? If you were a doctor, there'd be severe problems with the NHS. Uh, oh, imagine so that. Uh, I the standards would have lowered so much we to, go to if lunch. you can arrive at the hospital you're well, a doctor. Well, pop in, I go to lunch, don't we? We have a little lunch break, don't we? I go, come on, let's go now. He goes, I'm busy. I go, come on, let's go now. He's going, oh, you're doing me, Eddie. Well, when I was talking about the monkey conundrum with Carl, he said to me, right, if I had a day off work, and I was, say, watching the TV, and with one hand I was typing a uh, typewriter, would I type Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, but you see, there's certain things. We were talking a little bit about this stuff the other week, weren't we? When we said uh, <laughs> you were going on about Einstein, and I said he's not that good. Um, you know, E equals MC squared. You know, it sounds good, but I've never used it. And <laughs> I've never yeah. used it. Uh, you haven't used two and two equals four, Carl. The fella with an apple fell on his head. You know. It could have been anyone sat under that tree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> lucky, lucky. Yeah. And, uh, and Newton, gets all, Newton gets all the credit <laughs> no, yeah. you know for his mean? laws of the universe. <laughs> well, other people were working whilst he was having a lunch break under the tree. Okay. So in a way, it's like he didn't deserve to have that again, success story. Again, forget the apple and the tree and whether he was sitting down or having a lunch break. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's certain things that will just happen. You know, it's like, I think we were talking when we were out eating the other week. We were talking about Noel Gallagher. Well, this is reason the, the monkey right. discussion came up, right? We God. were- Noel Gallagher- I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Riff, I don't want to misquote Noel. I'd be like, uh, but Lom in Clue Song and I get a twitch whenever he opens his mouth. I don't know what- I don't know- I don't know where to start with some of his statements. Well, as I say, this all- this discussion began because we were talking about a quote that Noel Gallagher supposedly gave. Now, I don't want to misquote Gallagher, but the gist of it was that he said, um, uh, had I- uh, written Wonderwall or whatever, instead of the Beatles writing Strawberry Fields or whatever, I'd be the one that was considered the great songwriter and it wouldn't be the Beatles. You know, it's just the fact that they came first that meant that they get all the credit as being the greatest band I in the world. I don't know where to start with that statement either. I mean, that's Gallagher's thing and, uh, and he's, you know, well, whatever, we know what you think, we think of that. What was your point, Carl? I, you agreed with him, didn't you? Yeah, I reckon, right, do you know we've talked about putting a baby in a room before and, and you'll know what colour it is and stuff. If, if you've got a room that's painted red, Right, but uh, forget that, because that's going to confuse him. Hear him out, hear him out. Listen, can I, can I Rick, uh, listen to me. Say if they did some new TV show, right, like, um, what's that film with Jim Carrey in where the, uh... The Truman Show. The Truman Show, right? So they make up a little room, and, uh, some woman has some kids, and you say, right, let's put the kids in this room, and they don't know what's going on outside, they, they, they don't know anything about, like, EastEnders and that, it's like their little world, right? They don't know anything that's gone on. How could a child survive without EastEnders? <laughs> right, listen, so, you sat in the room, right, and then when they're all asleep... Right, this, wait for this bit. Someone pops- have, have you heard this Yeah, bit? wait for this bit. They're all in a room. Yeah. They're asleep. Yeah. Someone pops in, puts a guitar next to the bed, <laughs> right, nips off out again. They wake up in the morning, and, uh, one of them goes, what's this? They don't even know it's a guitar, because they've never seen one, right? They're talking English, though. Yeah. We just left guitar out of the vocabulary. Right, so... There's plenty more to come. So, one of them will pick it up, and they'll go, I don't know what it is, and they'll start strumming, they'll go, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give them a few weeks, they could come up with Hey Jude. Whereas, saying, typing Shakespeare, a monkey that can't even spell... I see that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't answer it. Can't answer I might come with you, Rick, if that's alright. Okay, we've got a sort of that Christmas special as well, Yeah, no, sure, sure. Oh, I, I see okay. that. Yeah, I'm well. sure you're not as well. Simon Lips, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, and XFM 104.9. Before the ad break, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great track. Lovely to hear that. Brilliant thing. track. We're not scared of playing that sort of stuff, are we? Indeed. We've got some great. I think we're underestimated here. People think we're just like, you know. Two guys and a buffoon in a room. <laughs> it was so much more than that. We, you know, we try and put together a whole package for them, don't yeah. they? For their Saturday afternoon listening pleasure. If there was an infinite number of us three in an infinite in an infinite number of studios yeah. broadcasting for an infinite number of shows, 
Would we ever do anything half decent? Yeah, we eventually. Would we ultimately come up with something quite? What good? was that email that you were laughing at? I can't. It's too rude. What does it say? It's well, too. It's too nasty. Oh, oh go on, give me the gist of it. The gist of it was that um, it would mean that if there was that infinite number of monkeys, eventually, besides the fact that they would type the complete works of Shakespeare, they would also type the sentence, "Carl Pilkington is a genius." But the email also said it would also type, "Ricky Gervais is a." C I can't say the word, but. Uh, I know. Yeah. But the number of times they type it and write, Carl Pilkington is a genius and Ricky Gervais is a cund. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were, they were, that would be there a lot. Yeah. Um, before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie Anderson! Anderson! You, Dicky Ducky Doo! Richard Anderson. Thanks for emailing. He's, and, my, uh, uh, he's my biggest fan He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, that's the great thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, "Ricky, I'm lazy. I talk nonsense. I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show?" <laughs> um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders. Maybe send in a CV or email a CV. He's got a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> oh, well, I'll ask you if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't mean no, there's only to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you. Did no I? To get nasty. Well, so I was thinking about that actually, Steve. Oh God! <laughs> Just talking of of the old uh, what? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know like? This better be good. No, you don't have that many girlfriends. And what? That. What do you mean, Carl? Why are we on this? I wasn't. I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? What's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking, <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you, you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Uh, come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. I've told you that loads of times. What do you Just mean, quick. you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve, I'm- I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money, right? <gasps> He's mean and weird-looking! Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna- oh. Are you sort of, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. You know. <laughs> You've got to love him though, haven't you? What What are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant- this is really mental! Or, are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which... A little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have- let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, wait, we've got a We've got so answer, much to get into this show. Insults, We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was- well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> right. Condoms? You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can have a go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always- do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on her Hang birthday. On when do you treat her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, why I oughta. What? Wait a minute. What was that? Deputy dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the check. Where'd you go? Where'd to, you go? Uh, to a chippy. Uh, that I really. <laughs> It's a chippy. <laughs> no, a really quality one. Right. Oh, God! One under a fiver for two. Oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper, greaseproof paper. And bread. And bread. And sometimes on XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. We've got so much to get through. All right, all right, uh, all right. London's shit, isn't it? Um, sorry, I swear on an on air, on air, my studio. Never, never swear on an on air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies. Not really swearing, is it? I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh. Um. So uh, yeah, graduate. You're gonna play that again and give a winner. Give a winner. Well, let's hear it. Uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? And have, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Thank you, then. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger.
tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. Alright. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I, d I never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, dear. A classic, an Oscar-winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington. In The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was, which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, that's easy. Everyone which knows actress that. was he uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer's Ricky? Hoffman. Mm-hmm. And, um... Uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the <laughs> 699 VHS cassette is going to Laura Gomez because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD, so, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. All right. Yeah? What will we do next week? Uh, I've, oh, got loads of, it. um, uh... I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into him. It gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. it is then. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit X and the track X. Have you seen Eight Mile? Really? I, I, I really enjoyed it. You notice Exhibit makes a little cameo in that. Yeah, and uh, that that last bit, that that wrap off at the end, it's well, it was lovely. It was so. It was just like it was like Rocky or something. Can we have just... a wrap off maybe next week? Yeah, <laughs> <The> three <laughs> yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, let's try and um, uh, master the art of talking yeah, civilly to each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl. Yeah. I'm not a champion of Rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I want well, to Well, I think Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's yeah. a popular thing, isn't it? Got the, some good prizes. The pressure well, behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. Brilliant. I play a lot of trance on well, this Well, I, I put that on quite a lot and danced <laughs> exactly. to it myself. Uh, there's the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film Adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You it's like that, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicolas Cage I playing himself and a twin brother. And, uh, it's written by, uh, Spike, uh, it's directed by Spike Jones. Joined at the, uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined at the hip at all, no. or, or at the face. And, uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What have we got on there? We've got things like, uh, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, 99 Red Balloons. The Rembrandt, in fact it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, then followed up by I'll Be There For You, the theme from Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And of course Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. Is <laughs> that happens, the worst name ever? I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence and None the Richer. Sixpence and None the Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we, we, I know we've got a lot of uh, chill out fans who listen yeah, to yeah, us. So, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. chill out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by uh, Carl from, I guess, People's Drawers. Yeah, looking in the drawer, looking in the drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single, so if yeah, you that's, is, that's well, early, isn't it? That's so, uh, you get that. It is worth A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmases? <laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome On to DVD. a place evil calls home. 
and uh, it's on DVD, it's Certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking, and it looks uh, appalling. Is Rogue Mansion truly haunted to find out Professor da 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 Okay, we've got the gist of it, they're not very good prizes, they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not let them call in, Rick. Please don't let these people call in. No, 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 they're not calling in, it's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just... Um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> like, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue, and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go there's on. two of them, there's a new aspect, which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, it would have been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. All right, it initials. Just fills me with... D, oh. S, D, S, why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? All right? And the, uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. Uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> His face goes along right. with it. That's, uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So, here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk on, all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. <laughs> right. That's terrifying. Right, I told you not to play that one. It's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that. I can't believe it's one thing. I said it's rubbish. No one will get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah, right. So, um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can win that stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me. I, I, I'm here. I've heard what you're saying. We've discussed this in the past. I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue. That's that um, screaming to a song. Is it? He was screaming. Well, don't say it. So it that's... should stand up by itself. Don't give him any clue. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist. Yeah, the that's, that's, that's so the, the first two are uh, bands or artists, and the, the, the last one <laughs> is the name <laughs> of a song. I said we should abandon this! I said we should just pack it in! What, the show? Yes! <laughs> Come on, talk. <laughs> I'm looking at his face, his headphones are too loud. Instead of turning them down, he's just grimacing, going, these are too loud. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. How have you lived this long? How did you make it to 30 without getting squashed or eating something deadly poisonous? I told you, he used to choke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've had an email from, uh, uh, Placebo, the bitter end. We've had an email from Andrew Forrest, who has just simply entitled it, Carl Pillockton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl Pillockton. What do you think of that? Oh, that's got to be your new name from now on. Oh. Uh, I had a mate who, uh, who used to use it. What, he used to call you that? Yeah. Was that your nickname at school, Pillockton? No, it's not my nickname. It is now. No, it's not. It is now. Pillockton. Pillockton. Oi, Pillockton. Oi, Pillockton. Pillockton, do Oi. my homework. Where Actually. do you live? Where do you come from? Pillockton? No, there's this lad who, uh, called Mark, right, who used to go to school with, who, uh, used to call me that. And, uh, his mum, right, was, like, obsessed with cleaning. And I was never allowed in their flat. <laughs> 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 he makes the place look untidy. So she used to, I don't know if it was just me or all his mates, but I used to turn up and she goes, yeah, he is him, but you know what you've got to do? And I used to have to go round the side of his flat, and he had a computer. Right, which he used to play, I, I didn't have one at that point, but he had one. And I used to have to go around the side of the flat and stand at his bedroom window with his window open and I'd be sort of leaning in playing the game. <laughs> you are joking. Not, his you had the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. The, the thing you were willing to do is the strangest, what is this town like? No, stop going Was, was there always music? There's the horse in the house there. Oh look at these two kids with big heads and webbed feet. Alright, alright Ronnie, alright Reggie. What, what was no, it, it was, like? She was, she was obsessed. It is like you've grown up in a cartoon made for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, his mum was really, um, obsessed with cleaning. I, I, 
When, um... Can I play through his window? <laughs> I used to... Uh, Put Mrs. Brown's on. bottom. Can I play through Mark's window? Aye, you know what you have to do. She used to be up to that. Is that Pinnacton again? <laughs> <laughs> have you washed your hands? Well, up till three in the morning, washing. She used to be up doing the tiles in the kitchen. Washing until three in the morning? Until three in the morning. And for ages and ages, I- that's- what, that's saying that out on the tiles, I used to think that came from, like, his mum. Because she was out, like, cle cleaning them late, so, until I was about thirteen, I thought that saying, out late, on the tiles, Yeah. was- And now you're not confused by anything. <laughs> well? There's no misunderstandings in your life now, is there? So, so what did- was he was allowed to walk in and out of the house, was no, he? No, he, he was alright, but- and he used to come round to ours a lot, and my mum used to get these pies from Agenbach's, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's at that bakery where they used to chuck the cakes out the back, oh, I yeah. told you about. Yeah. Oh, well, you had six, you had six. He loved it, but I could never go round to theirs, or if I did, it was like, well, yeah, he is in, and I'd go, alright, and then I'd, I'd walk round the side of the flat, <laughs> stand outside. <laughs> Why did you ever knock at the door? Why did you just go round and knock on the window? Just to check his in, because he wasn't always in his room. You if say he was in the lounge, a... he'd have to go to his bedroom and then- that's You say- meet you. I, this is the strangest- and you'd play a computer game through the window. You yeah. say it was a flat, it wasn't like a fifth story one and you had to get in one of those kind of cleaning contraptions <laughs> and like winch your way up. I'm not <laughs> I love the idea of that. So. Oh, Pillockton. So, well, uh, we're done what, 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 have you got me any, uh, chimpanzee that, We've or? We've got monkey news still, still to cram in, in the next, like, Let's do monkey news times. now. I, want, no, I need some monkey no, news. No, I think we've done enough here, right? What do you mean? I think we've done enough here. We'll, we'll play a little song, eh? What? We'll play, um, play the verb. Alright. Monkey news. Monkey news. He's getting all stressed because I screamed. Sparky stream, teenage fan club. I'll tell you, I'm sick of the screaming, Rick. I'm <laughs> sick of that. I mean, no wonder Carl hates you, and that is the word I don't use often, but he does, and I've spoken to him in the past, and he loathes you. Monkey news. Give us one of the screams so the audience at home gets a taste of it. I'm taking my headphones off. No, I'm not going to scream. Go on, let's see what this. Ah! Right, well, that wasn't on. what you were doing. Uh, was it worse than that? Yes! Right, come on, monkey news. We're it's not, not going to. It's not called monkey news. Uh, chimpanzee, we're not going to pack all the monkey stuff in. We've got quarter of an hour. What? <laughs> what other show can say that? <laughs> yeah. We've got. Our, we're not going to pack in all the monkey yeah. news. We've got fifteen minutes where we can't get all the monkey information. <laughs> right, go on. Well, you're going to love this one. Uh, go on. Is there a, uh, this other jingle? Oh, chimpanzee that. Right. Um, I don't know how recent this was. Oh God. Seventeenth century. But it, ha it happened in Acne, right? <laughs> Uh, if you're outside London, that's in that place in London. Um, and it's this monkey that's going about acne, nicking DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the monkey didn't go for videos. <laughs> Even the monkey knew. Well, there's no point in getting on VHS. The on VHS. <laughs> <You're having> a... <laughs> Throw it back. Right, and there's a girl called Lisa who works in our office here, right, and I mentioned it to her because uh, she lives in Hackney. I said, uh, you familiar with this? And, uh, she said, oh, I remember something about it, which annoyed me. The fact that a monkey's running riot, but she couldn't, she didn't know the full story, <laughs> and she lives there. What, is, what do you mean a monkey? Do you mean a, do you mean a chimpanzee? Or a um, monkey? I don't know, is there a zoo in Acne? Is there a zoo there? I don't, I don't know, know what sort it was, but it, it, it was like- Is gone. there a zoo in Hackney? I don't know, I don't know, that's what I was asking. <laughs> So, right, um, get on with the story. So anyway, so yeah, it's been robbing stuff, and um, <laughs> the pu the other bit that really puzzled me, right, is the fact that- And you're not easily puzzled by monkey news. They took fingerprints. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they took fingerprints presumably because they didn't know it was a monkey to start with. No, they did. They saw it, they saw it, nicking stuff, <laughs> and they said, get fingerprints. What? So that means there's more than just one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart. He had to fax them to Interpol. Yeah, yeah. We know that is. Yeah, it's Brian. It's Brian the monkey. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, I don't. Understand. He was stealing DVDs, specifically DVDs. Yeah, DVDs. I think it said watches and stuff. What breaking into homes? Yeah, in Hackney. Maybe. Are you sure it wasn't a kid with a mask on? No, seriously. How was he breaking into homes? They go up the drain pipe. They're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? <laughs> But how would they do so that? So is that the news? <laughs> well, that's what, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news? For, for this week. Well, I don't know that it's true. 
Again, I've got nothing to There was other stuff. There was another story that I found about a monkey, but I'd, I would like to know from someone if, in Hackney if, do you know what I mean? And I missed that one on Crime Watch, which would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> right? But there was another story about one that, uh, kept getting on buses, not paying its fare. Not paying its fare. And just sat in the corner reading the paper. <laughs> reading the paper, Carl! You're an idiot! Well, that, that wasn't in London. You're an idiot! That, that was in America. It wouldn't read the like. paper. Why would it read the paper? Because it was its way of sort of going, oh, well, if I'm reading something, maybe the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the inspector will notice my hairy hands. Oh, Carl, you're such a fool! Well, Carl. Carl, Carl I've just had a news flash that an infinite number of monkeys in Hackney and nicking an infinite number of typewriters. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what for. At this stage, we've got no more information. And they've, they've taken back an infinite amount of graduate on <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> this is rubbish. <laughs> See the grass, seeing the light. I just think of people sort of uh, other Saturday going, uh, you're coming shopping. I, go, I can't, I'm listening to uh, <laughs> XFM. There might be some monkey news. <laughs> and they waited two hours for that. that one, what sort of, what sort of a show has a feature called monkey news? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, the, uh, the monkey story has been corroborated. Someone Which email. one? Well, this one, uh, it says, uh, police in Britain this week are on the lookout for a very different kind of burglar, a chimpanzee who has been sighted breaking into a house in Hackney, stealing a mobile phone and leaving. The chimp is also the prime suspect in a break and entry in a nearby house where part of a radio was taken. One policeman stated that it might have been trained to steal, but a monkey's not going to think, that's a mobile phone, I'll just have that. Look at Carl's face. Yeah. Fact. Well, that's fact. So, um, rockbusters then. Yeah. Get these out of the way, we. We're out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we've been in it. All right. I thought we'd already been, I'm annoyed that- Right, come on, do, 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 what was the, do, do it quickly. Uh, the first one was, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. Well, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Busted. Right, that works, all Busted, right. that's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got- No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Busted. Um, Busted. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. That was DS. Yeah. Uh, 70s band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> The Detroit Spinners have become the Detroit Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I play you some effects. Let's hear like this. Let's hear <laughs> it's terrifying, Carl. It's terrifying. Well, what's happened there? What What was happening? No, what, no, 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 what's, no. what's the answer? That was uh, born slippy. She, the woman was having a baby. The doctor tried to grab it. It fell. To the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's in your head. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm. Uh, do you know what? I haven't even got onto Warren Slippy. I'm still on the <laughs> Trout Spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. Uh, I week. don't. I, I don't know what to say. Steve, a song for the. A song for the ladies, surely. Uh, Did anyone get any of those? Let's end with Nick Drake. And the beautiful river man, and we'll see you next week, and hopefully, oh, we'll see you next week. Oh, spinners. Ditched. Detroit spinners. Well, don't keep saying it. <laughs> you say it like that. Well, don't. White Stripes, Dead Leaves, and the Dirty Ground on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. We have got a great show lined up for you. Absolutely. Today, it's just, uh, yeah, Valentine's weekend, some love songs, Ooh. we've got some chat, and of course the competitions. I'll tell you what, I, I was walking here today, and the West End is crammed. There's helicopters, there's police, there's about a million people sort of just milling around, standing around with placards and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but they've got too much time on that. They, they need a war. You don't read the newspapers, do you? Boring. Ooh, those boys can rock there. That's the guns with all their roses. <laughs> and sweet child of mine. <laughs> on oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah.
That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I rocks, hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilton. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a- Cause you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think- I, I just always find that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone- Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed, then you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh. You just forget to go to bed. So you I go, just stay up. Okay, stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food, that's just the plate. All right, okay. Yeah. No, I just- I, I stayed up and watched, um, it was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not- not the fact that- is the living dead and is no nope. drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well, and you can go on the mirror thing. You can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah, that well, still doesn't work. Go okay, on. Go on. it doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work. Go anyway. on. <laughs> well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I love the floor in the Dracula film is that his centre farting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was- The real Dracula. Called, the real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. The it's just story. a film. It had blood on the floor or something it was called. Yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah. From 1970. Yeah. Right. But you, you say that and watch that. You know there aren't yeah, really vampires that, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it still annoys you that his centre part was too neat. Well, if you're gonna do it, do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him with a fringe, sort of pushed forward, mm. and maybe a hood up, alright? Come to stop your blood and that, alright? Uh, yeah, just bits of tissue paper all over his face yeah, where oh, he's cut himself oh, clean. Oh, oh, I can't see. Bloody mirror is annoying me, alright? <laughs> I'd love to see that. A little mank drack. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, that, that might be a film that we do in uh, our movie. Mankula. Just, just getting onto that. Mankula. Count Mankula. <laughs> Alright. You got any rave? You got any rave music? Huh? Like, <laughs> got any oasis like that? Like, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. He came from Manchester. Please welcome Mankula. Alright. That'd be great, wouldn't it? His hair's a mess. Well, I can't see a mirror, can I? <laughs> well, we've got a show lined up for you. Um, sad news. For Rockbusters fans, it is going to be the last Rockbusters. Does that mean that we are doing another one and it's the last one? Or we are doing another one together? and it's the last one. Oh, man. Got a bit of a special one, Steve. Have you? Yeah. Um, it's just sort of done. What, it makes there. sense. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> First time only. No, it's it's uh, it's done on accents because I'm running out of like clues and that to use. Oh, is this as bit good as the Jamaican one? Uh, <laughs> the the de trout spinners. <laughs> the trout spinners that doesn't work. At all. <laughs> a bit like that. Okay, so go on, what's, uh, what's the gist of this one? Well, it's just, um, I've been the sound effects bit, that, that didn't really work well. out. So there's three sort of cryptic clues. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, sort uh, of cryptic, yeah. it's done on, uh, it's done on accents, and I've sort of worked down the country, so I've got a northern one, mm -hmm. I've got a brummy one, and I've got a, uh, cockney one. Oh, right. so we'll look forward to that. We've that got later. quite a lot of competitions, haven't we? Because we've also got your film competition. He's, uh, appearing in The Shining this week, Steve. Excellent. Okay. Um, we've also got, ooh, chimpanzee <laughs> that. More monkey news from around the world. <laughs> monkey news. Uh, Stay tuned for that. But, there's one that I thought we could phase in as we phased out Rockbusters. It's an old favourite. Carl, it was before your time. Exa Family Fortunes. Exa Family Fortunes, it's brilliant. Get it owes nothing to TV show Family Fortunes. No, it's Exa Family Fortunes. You can't get him on that. So we'll be playing that a little bit later as well with two lucky, um, people at the and we'll be giving away some great prizes, I imagine, Excellent. Steve. Yeah. Go through those a little bit later. Yeah. Um, as it was Valentine's weekend, what about, uh, a lovely song by Lloyd Carr? Oh. Like lovers do, yeah? Love oh. Lloyd Carr. Like lovers do on XFM 104.9. Is that for all the lovers out there? <laughs> yeah. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and little Carl Wilkinson. Oh, we're having a laugh, aren't we? Little Carl with his hey, sandwich and that. Up, he? Oh, I'm, a, oh, I'm still bruised where you punched me in the shoulder, showing that you could box. Yeah, to be fair though, Rick, you do think that you're now a yeah. professional boxer because like you've been on the telly boxing. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, I mean, he laughs about it, but he does walk around thinking, yeah, I could probably handle myself in a yeah. street brawl. In fact, I walk around handling myself. Yeah. A lot of the time, don't I, yeah. Carl? Um, 
And often Carl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Because his little round head, I've got another mate that's got a little bald head, and I'd like to squeeze it. Mm. I'd just like to see how far. Do you know what I mean? Like an egg. It, you can squeeze it that way, sort of sideways, and that hurts. But then squeeze it forward to back. It doesn't hurt so much, does it? Do you know what worries me, though? I think if you ever actually did crack Carl's head, I think yolk would come out. <laughs> yeah. I did, he was drawing, and I gave him a little karate chop on the back of the head, and he jumped. He spasmed. Sorry, you gave him a karate chop on the back of the head? Yeah. To be fair, though, I think I'd spasm it. <laughs> <laughs> if a man crept up behind me and karate chopped me in the neck, oh, that's didn't probably a natural God. reaction. Didn't I laugh, eh, Gus? That's right, good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we got lots of uh, little things to get through. I mean, look at his little face. You are right. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right, and uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh, any of you out there, um, know about this, um, but there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scart lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like, its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went, instead of, like, thinking this is an amazing experiment, he went, would it, would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining it, and I remember you mentioned, because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me, you said, of course, one side of the brain deals with, uh, symbolism, and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed you took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said it. I said Nobleker at one point as well. Right. Yeah. And I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah. spelling, the spelling of it's what what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't put, couldn't do it. Can't no, put, they probably, yeah. don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't but yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, what explain to I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us, evolutionally speaking. They've got their social, um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary ladder? Chimp, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About, so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> WC featuring Snoop, The Streets on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I think we should, uh, kick off with a bit of a competition. I think we should get the, the listeners involved here. Mm -hmm. Phone up if you want to play XF Family Fortunes. Now, a lot of people, of course, won't be familiar with this because we played this in the very early days of XFM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain but the rules or do you just want people to phone it, in? It's like family fortunes. We need two of you. <laughs> uh, I asked you. Do you remember we discussed this before? You can't say that. Yeah. Um, and so get two on the line. You're, you're competing against each other. And so it's fingers on the buzzers. Um, will you stop chewing, picking your teeth? It, it's, it, I mean, even if the listeners can't hear, it really annoys me. It is a bit like having a chimp in the room. Do you know what I mean, Carl? Right. Have you ever seen him he eat hot food? No. Oh, honestly, it is like a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing? What? <laughs> Just get. Oh, God. <laughs> or like the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm never annoying, Carl, so why are you? Do you know what I mean, Steve? 
You're so annoying. I'd say, have you been with him for trying to go, trying to have lunch with Ricky? Yeah. It's the hardest thing possible. Yeah. You wander around for hours. Com it's a, well, the combination, it used to be bad even before he was a celebrity because he has this, the, a tolerance level, I, it's extraordinary. I mean, he is irritated <laughs> by a car honking its horn in the street. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe it, let's go in here, I, I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, he, he gets annoyed by police sirens, by rain, wind, <laughs> birds in the air, other people in the streets. They're the most annoying. Children particularly, whether they're in a school playground we happen to be walking past, <laughs> whether they're on TV. It's just noise that isn't mine. Well, I know, but this is the thing, you are the most irritating man I've ever met, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know that card, don't you? I mean, yeah. noises he makes, oh. um, uh. it's extraordinary. I mean, I've been, I've been, well, I've been editing some behind-the-scenes footage we shot of, uh, making the second series of The Office. It's extraordinary. I've had to cut sequences out involving Ricky because they'll just think he's a giver, just think he's an idiot, like some kind of puppet that the rest of us are controlling because he's shouting, he's whistling, he's honking, he's making noises, he's dancing around. It's extraordinary. And if you're out trying to find somewhere to eat with him, all these irritants, all these annoyances, and it's, oh, that music's too loud, I don't like that particular song, I'm not going in there, there's more than eight people in that cafe, I'm not going in there. <laughs> it's just extraordinary. I think we need a woman. I'm thinking of hiring a woman, like a PA, to just go out ahead of us, scout ahead of us, go in, you know, and she, she can just sexist. phone back and say, Oh, <laughs> sexist. <laughs> oh. Or a guy. Oh, that's Or a fella. Oh, sexist. Or a fella. Just to scout ahead. Oh. I'm thinking back. of hiring a woman, subservient role. We couldn't hire him. Oh, no. Oh, sexist. Well, that or a chance to meet a woman. <laughs> Yeah. That I'm also yeah. paying. It's like, it's like paying for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like more above board. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to play Family Fortunes, call up. What's the number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Yeah, it's just like Family Fortunes, two of you are competing for some great prizes. And, uh, I go, um, something you'd, you know how it goes, and then <laughs> go buzz and, and, uh, play around board. It's not as high tech <laughs> as Family <laughs> Fortunes. <laughs> Current single from uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, that's Bring It On. Yeah. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and two people on the line to play XF Family Fortunes. <laughs> Brilliant. Hello. Steve hello. first. Steve, hello. Steve first, hello, how you doing? You all right, mate? Where are you calling yeah. from? Uh, from my pub in Barnes. You got a pub? Yeah. In Barnes? Yeah. Are you posh? No. Oh. <laughs> I suppose they- <laughs> You're the, the, the local landlord, do they, do they come yeah. in and sort of like go, good man, there's a, there's a shilling, get me some ale. They're all posh in barns, aren't they? Well, no, not all of them, actually. Does Nigel that. Havers come in your pub, because he lives there, doesn't he? <laughs> um, well, none of them do, actually. I know there's lots of them about, aren't there, in barns, but, um, but no, not You've in banned them. You've banned them. Who, who's on the other line? It's, uh... Jennifer. Jennifer, hello. Hello. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Forest Hill. Forest Hill, that's yeah. right south, and I don't go out of WC1. <laughs> oh, you should. Do you run a pub? <laughs> Do I own a pub? No. Do you drink in one? Yes. That's just good. <laughs> just, just, just from friendly chat there. Yeah, I think it's just, thing just between the brain that you were talking about before. Oh yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, they did an experiment, and apparently the length of it determines whether you're a straight or gay. Is that that's right? What I heard. Yeah. Well. So what, you could actually trim it if you fancied. <laughs> 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 it didn't go that far. Oh. No, you, you, you've just interacted with Carl Pilkington. Oh my I'd, god. I'd treasure that. Right, here's the prizes. Okay, now, um, listen, don't be disappointed because, as ever, Carl has just gone through some people's drawers here at XFM and found some really quite shoddy prizes. So, um, you get <laughs> on DVD, I don't know if you're a fan of, is it, are they a German band? Rammstein or Rammstein? Oh, you'll enjoy that. But there's, uh, there's any number. <laughs> that, that includes Ash zu Ashk, Spiel mit mir, <laughs> and Hauselade. That's just some of the classics on this, uh, DVD of their, <laughs> their greatest videos. Uh, Red Dwarf, uh, the First Do you think series. Germans sit around looking at Oasis records and going, look at these Wonder Wall? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly so. Wow. Um, best, the very best of the Stone Roses, um, although I might have that, so, anyway, uh, there's also an I Love You compilation, kind of appropriate, and, um, a tribute to the Ramones, which so might be interesting. So you can get the idea, um, Stephen and Jennifer, the stakes are pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very here high. we go. Oh, yeah, Extra family hard. fortunes. So, fingers on the buzzers, just both go, wah, if you think you can answer this right, and then we, uh, the, the highest answer, or the top answer, gets a chance to play or pass. If you play, you've got to get all five answers, there are five answers, um, 
every wrong answer, you get a life and I go <laughs> and when you get three, when you lose three lifelines, so the other person can steal. It's as simple as that. If you've seen uh, the show Family Fortunes. No, this is a new, this is not based on anything I've ever seen ever <laughs> in my life. Okay, right. Okay, fingers on the buzzers. Okay. Name something. We asked eight of my mates, right? Something you associate with Carl Pilkington. Wow. Okay, Jennifer, <laughs> what? Silliness. Yeah, that's the top answer, thick or dimness. Hang on. Do you want to play or pass? Play, please. Okay, okay. Stay, stay tuned, Stephen, because you might be able to steal if she gets three wrong. Okay. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Right, we've got a top answer, four to go. Thick or dimness is top answer, obviously. Okay, Jennifer, some other things associated with Carl. Comedy. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. No. No. I don't even know who he is. Um. You uh, don't even know who he is? <laughs> 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 no, she does. She must <laughs> and do. And yet, bizarrely, <laughs> she knows that silliness or yeah. stupidity is not answer. <laughs> yeah, come on. Something else. Um, uh, smelly eyebrows. <laughs> 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 One more wrong answer and then Stephen gets a chance to steal. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know. Um... People are screaming it at home. Very sensible. <coughs> oh, what was that? Very sorry. sensible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stephen, can you think of one of the answers that Jennifer didn't get? Uh, must be a, a mind for a name nonsense. Oh well, uh, no, I'm going to give you that because number five is even thicker. So, <laughs> yeah, you what you missed is um, the top answer was thick or dim. Second top answer was Manchester. Third was rounded. Fourth was airy Chinese kid. And five was um, even thicker. Um, so I, I think Stephen's the winner there. Yeah, I think he's done well. Yeah. Uh, you enjoy uh, Ramstein and you get uh, some Stone Roses and an I Love You CD. So that's the, that's the pilot for this show, okay? When Blockbuster's is all over, this we're going to phase in XF Family Fortunes. Carl, thoughts? It's not that good, is it? Why? It's not, it's not that good. Just. <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not that happy with it. Why? Why? Yeah. Oh, I'm just... What else? What, what... No. <laughs> You're definitely <laughs> right about that top answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, uh, right, um, so, uh, Stephen wins all those prizes. Yeah. Uh, Stay on the line and we'll send, take your address. And we'll send something to Jennifer as well for even bothering to talk to Carl. Oh. So this, <laughs> what's this, Carl? What are you playing now? That about the drone boy. Yeah, excellent. Bye. What are doing? Do you remember doing Rockbusters then? Later. Eminem, sing for the moment on XFM 104.9 with your own Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, moving on. Got a lot to cram in. If you yawn again or pick your teeth or chew, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, can I just, you know, sometimes I get told off by Carl, he gets a little bit sulky if I slag off the prizes that he sources for each competition. Uh, this is from Rob in Croydon. He's a former winner of Rockbusters. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't even know what the prizes were going to be when he entered. Uh, he won, and sure enough, for one night only, he was a hero. The following morning, uh, it was just Rob again, and all I had to show for my t triumph are five compilation CDs I'll never listen to. Yeah. And two DVDs. I'll perhaps get nine pounds for on eBay. Please get some decent prizes. Ricky, you're BBC's golden child of comedy. What are you doing? How many of your listeners really are into Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince? No one. That's how many. Now that is a winner. That's someone who's got a reason to like us and oh, like you. I think he's got the same attitude as Steve when you give him something for free. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Sorted you out with NERD tickets for last night. A lot of messing around, a lot of phoning around yeah. going on to get your own tickets. Yeah. Come in today. You enjoy the gig, couldn't be bothered going, yeah. Carl. Typical. Yeah. I didn't say I couldn't be bothered going, Carl. You just presume, presume, assumed that that was the case. You're right, but well. the point is this, Carl. Once you've given me the tickets, they are mine to do with as I see fit. The thing is, what annoys me is right. <laughs> I bet he hasn't even listened to them CDs. He might no, find something. No, on there. that's his point. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, to be but, fair. But I don't want to give him stuff that's too good because then they'll listen to CDs instead of XFM. <laughs> Of course, there's always careful planning. <laughs> ah! So. You always got an answer. Oh, Carl, you're my hero. We, <laughs> we don't care, do we, Carl? Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, I think the prizes are alright considering what they've got to do. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's just a bit of fun, for God's sake. <laughs> so, uh. Please do not blaspheme on air. Something, uh. <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um. <laughs> The Shining. It's just more throwing away, isn't it? 
Like, once again, is it on it, video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just cause you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. Uh, and I wanna watch it tonight, cause it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of those th films that <laughs> I'm gonna... Sorry, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family Fortune <laughs> before he <does> it away? <laughs> It costs five ninety nine. Bowen has a go at those his narrow towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then. No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone, uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write, is typewriter. Oh, I'll just show you, just... Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's just, the typewriter being, you're not, you're not in the mood, are you just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, that you get into when you're writing. You're not. Being grouchy, I just want to finish my work. Yeah, I was just, just, just being a bit funny, a bit off hand and that. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff, got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book, do you know what I mean, sort of following round. Uh, I'd swell. Well, I, I'd buy it, you know, but if you don't want to know, we'll have to... Don't bother doing it, but, do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid cakes in it, but if you don't care- I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but- it, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Oh, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much, just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still... Why don't you start right now and get out of here? Alright. I will. If you're gonna be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there, Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know, in the film, Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know, if I was stranded in a desolate hotel, removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more <laughs> chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the head of it. And he, he was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary, there's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if I was trying to do that, that would be like being, I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's, that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In the 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1, the old bin lid on the head, <laughs> he wanted to do that again. Yep. Uh, squeezing my head, think he had a go at, and a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. 
All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say that? What do you mean? Uh, uh, anyway, have we got a question then? Yeah, it's a weird copy of, I'm so embarrassed to say it, The Shining <laughs> on, VHS. on VHS is worth five ninety nine, <laughs> and it will have already been watched by Carl Pimpton, probably not even rewound. Yeah, to not win that. Rewound and a, a little bit of tripe and cow eels <laughs> where it just <laughs> slipped into his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a farm cake yeah. outside. As he was reading the back of the box, Trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> yeah, the, the ingredients. Um, to what about this, right? To whip. Oh, here's a question. I've got a question. Oh, no, go on. No, what, no, I want to hear Carl's first. Okay. No, it's about the film. Yeah. Um, because when I was whizzing through it, I saw something. I thought, oh, that's good. Um, the kid who's in it. Um, he was writing something on the back of a door with lipstick. <laughs> what was it? Well, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. Nor can I. Right. So the kid in it was writing Is something on the back of the door. Is that going to be too hard for anyone? Let's see if- I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody. Right. But the phones are going, so it might be. Yeah, but this is email, isn't it? All right. Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> what was being scrawled on the back of a door by the little kid in The Shining? Be honest, if you know that, it means you've probably already got it and you've watched it about eight times. Yeah. Fair enough, though. All right. Uh, Bob Dylan. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me lonesome when you go on XFM. Sorry, they're arguing. Steve and Carl but are arguing. But he just goes, you've got to keep about, it slick. Do you know what, can I just tell them what you're arguing about? The, think of this, right? This is the argument. They're arguing whose fault it is why this show is rubbish. Think of that! What? What? That's the proof of that? I think that's a valid criticism. At least we're discussing it. You're just accepting that that's the case. <laughs> you're not even trying to change it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah. We have to I go out there. Be, I should be, but, uh, I, I quite like it. In fact, I remember, remember when we went out about two weeks ago and said <laughs> so we've, we've got to, you know, make it tighter and that, make it good. <laughs> um, went out for something to eat. <laughs> you, you were happy sat at the table talking about squids and having to, <laughs> you know, go off with one if you wanted to have a kid. I brought up the topic, right, what we're gonna do about the show, suddenly you've gotta go. It's like, oh, I think I've, I've made plans. So me and Steve sat there, can I just no, no, <laughs> See, I do the, I, I, I do, I do acknowledge, um, uh, quite, quite shamefully that this is more enjoyable for me to do than for you to listen to. But it's like, it's like two hours sort of playtime for me. It's like, um, you know the study period when you're meant to read a book but you actually can't afford to run around and draw pictures. I think like this, even though I'm getting paid for this and I'm meant to be working, it's nice. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> not, not for the listener. But, but the, for me. But the problem is, the only way we can improve this show, Carl, to be honest, the only way we can make this good is if the three of us resign. Yeah. And they <laughs> replace it with someone else. Yeah, but Carl, you, you're getting flustered and you're getting stressed because you're, tr you know, I don't know what I was saying, answer the phones, you were letting them ring, you're still letting it ring. You're still letting people phone, you go, oh look, leave that. And uh, people have phoned in, good enough to phone in, to ask for something for free. <laughs> I think you should at least answer the phone and say, it's not worth it, the prizes are rubbish. Well, whilst I'm doing all the other stuff, maybe you can do that. No way. Right then. No but to be way. fair, Rick, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of being lazy. No. But you're sat on a chair and yet you're almost vertical. <laughs> I don't know how you've done it. It's like you're almost asleep, <laughs> but you're sat on that right chair. I don't know how you've actually angled yourself I'm gonna way. have a bad back when I'm, oh, in old age. I'm just gonna be bent double. Alright, so come on I now. What? Pretend we're starting now. Okay. We've just started the show Yeah, now. it's two o'clock. It's right. XFM. Um, it's the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, or our show. It's our show. From now on, I'm, I'm, I'm at least <laughs> <laughs> cutting up the blame as well. Um, XFM 104.9, what do you want to know? Funny thing happened to me on the, on the way here. <laughs> okay. Um, actually it was, uh, about Wednesday or Thursday, I was walking along, I was walking along the Charing Cross Road, I was on my way here actually to meet Carl for a drink, and um, this little fella came up to me, I think it was, uh, an overseas student, he's sort of like a student type but he had an accent, and uh, he came up to me and went, excuse me, I use, uh, one from the office? And I went, um, yeah. Yeah, he went, um, would you sign a script book of the office for me? I went, uh, yep, by all means, yeah. He went, can you come to the bookshop? <laughs> and I went, what, what, you haven't got it on you? He went, no, but if you come, I will buy one for you to sign. And I went, I can't really. He went, <laughs> were you gonna pass one? I went, I'm oh, not, no, I'm, I can't. He went, and he went, as he went, Oh, I was just, I was just in Waterstones earlier, I didn't, I didn't, I went, oh, sorry, he went, you could just, I went, I can't, he went, okay. I went, I'll, I'll sign something else, have you got something else I can sign? He went, of course. 
<laughs> and I signed a pamphlet or a brochure or something <laughs> for him. But I love the idea. Imagine me going with him. <laughs> I'm queuing up, and I'm in the queue. He's going, uh, you can't go, yeah, fine, can you just uh, hurry up? And, and he gets there and his switch doesn't work and he goes, can you lend me ten pounds? <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine that. I'm a little bit annoyed you didn't go with him, frankly, because that would have been a sale of our book and I get a little cut from that. Well, behind him was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> going, right. can, can we hurry up? Because yeah. I've really, I shouldn't be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. But it, I thought it was very odd the other day. Was we were walking along, and Ricky often gets bothered for an autograph. And um, some Japanese people who I think were tourists, oh, kind of, they, 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 they appeared from behind the corner. And I thought this is odd. That, you know, they seem like tourists, but they're obviously going to ask for an autograph. <laughs> and they just handed him a camera and said, "Excuse me, would you take a photo of us?" I was, I and was cracking up. Him. They didn't recognise him. I was laughing. I was thinking, right. Oh, so now Ricky stood in the street. People are recognising him as he's taking a photo <laughs> of three <laughs> complete Japanese people. strangers. <laughs> and I imagine them getting home and so it's saying, and here's the one we had taken by Ricky Gervais. Taken with Ricky Gervais? No, taken by Ricky Gervais. From the office. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Uh, <laughs> would you come to uh, the bookshop with me? The um, life of a minor celebrity. Not really. <laughs> Times like these, Food Fighters and XFM 104.9. Carl, right. let's build up to monkey news. Do you want to give the, uh, the competition answer and winner? Yeah, uh, we did the bit on, on The Shining, me acting out in that. Yeah. And the question was, the kid in the film The Shining, yeah. he, uh, <laughs> after like the devil had got in him and that, <laughs> uh, This isn't written out, is it? You're just winging this, aren't you? No, but I remember it. I but remember you haven't seen it. the film though, have you? No, but when I was whizzing through to get the clips to make that thing, right. I saw it and I thought, hang on a minute, I'll watch this bit. And yeah. that's why I want to take it on yeah. tonight and watch you're excited, it. Yeah. I meant more how you're presenting the competition. It's just like Jonathan Ross on film 2003. Well, I'm just just saying, right? So the kid's there in the bedroom, and yeah. he's uh, he's got his mum's lipstick. Yeah. And he's uh, he's saying. It doesn't it run a, a mobile deed. No. Nope. And he no. said uh, it, it, he wrote down red rum. Yeah. On the back of the door. Uh -huh. And his mum wakes up and thinks, "What's he doing?" Yeah. She looks at him and she goes, "Oh." And then she looks in the mirror. And sees red rum in the mirror. Right. Which is sort of. He's offering racing tips. He yeah. says murder in the oh, mirror. Clever. Oh, clever. So, uh, Kelly in Hounslow got that right. So, Excellent. after I've watched the film, I'll be whizzing that over oh, to Hounslow. Brilliant. I, I, I mean, the one thing I do like about um, this show, uh, for all its faults, is the. Honesty? Yeah. I mean, that can be good and bad. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, some people think it's it's sloppy, arrogance, laziness, you know, I thoughtlessness. Think be right. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I like I like to think it's honesty. It's like a peek into the to the mind and workings of Carl Pilkington. He just said to me because he was shaking because he, he said to me and the, I, I quote he said oh he's just uh, uh, whittering to himself. I must remember to eat next time <laughs> Suzanne's away. I know, I know. I, I like must to remember it. to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did. I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about. <laughs> <laughs> because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So, I mean, for all I've eaten- A lot of self-abuse. Is that I what you're saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up, right? Why did you mess it up? Caught it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and she called up and said, have you eaten? I went, yeah. She went, was it nice what you have? I said, lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, because she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, well, I'm, you know, and she went, okay, fine, fine. I go, that car, go, yeah, yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. <laughs> yeah. I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway, <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast. That is all I've had. So I'm starving, I'm shaky. Plus I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on. <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? <laughs> I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired but my legs aren't. <laughs> 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 Are you like Michael Flatley? <laughs> you have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on like the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's weird <laughs> to get a decent night's sleep. I put it down to smarties and that. It's like a sugar thing, but yeah. um, stop eating them. Apparently, Bob Morton has got it as well. No, he's got arthritis. Was he? You told yeah. me the week that you've mastered uh, moonwalking. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can do that. Is that one of the things you did, like, in the middle of the night? It's it's, it's still moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He just gets out, he finds himself walking backwards and wakes up and goes, oh, God, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant at this. Right, so, so, listen, what we're doing now, are we doing, uh, are we getting a debate going about... Actually, right? Go on. We're struggling, go on. No, no. You can help me out here, Carl, you've got an idea. I can see it in your eyes, he's got a brilliant idea. Wait for it, go on. No, no. It's something, when I was looking on the web, yeah. found something out. Go on. Um, it's a story about yeah. a woman who had a baby, <laughs> who had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> ah, what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer when you repeated it. No, I can't. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good, right? Uh, pursue this line of inquiry, right? Because I don't know where it's going. Or play a record. I I am actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What? Uh, so what should we do? Should we, should we go with it? Is it I mean, it's like, it's entering into the abyss, it's opening Pandora's box, it's, <laughs> it's peeking by, it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions though. Go on then. Well, come down there with me. Okay, come down right, the cellar with me. Okay, right. Carl, what, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, but was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. It's Russian, Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're called. That's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you tap the, Ed off and there's another one in there that all look the same, but no, the story was, there's a woman who's- No, don't just say it again, that's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th- as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go, and uh, yeah. read that. That's, just a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the baby, she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that's that. That's normal. That's normal. A totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more of apart you from the fact that huh? the baby is like roaming about, <laughs> and then uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh, interesting. So the gestation period of the, that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. Weird though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's twelve months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about, twelve months later, it Abbott? What are you talking about? Forget it. No, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't, I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that and I thought, it. What? That's, that's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like, imagine the kid at school, at parents' evening. <laughs> Go on. And it's like, well, your <laughs> kid's pretty good, now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have <laughs> just <laughs> left the cellar door closed. But I never learned. That's the zombies and a song called Time of the Season. I've enjoyed that. What do you think of zombies, Carl? It's alright, yeah. No, not the, not the group, but the, oh, the, the living dead. Don't worry about them. No? Why? Not about, are they? What not happen? <laughs> you don't right, believe listen, in that? Listen, right? You don't believe in zombies? So, I But was you do believe online. a baby had a baby? Yeah. On you go, on you go. Are you still saying that didn't happen? Yes. Right, well I'll find the thing again and I'll print it off and well, then you'll read I'm it. all I'm saying is there's more information that we need. Yeah. yeah. But, but it always annoys me that when I do get the information, you'll go, yeah, but it's named Sally, you didn't say that, and make out- No. Uh, as if- No, 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 no don't do. make it look like w- w- we're over inquisitive or over cynical. You come out with the- the most abominable things man has ever uttered, <laughs> and you expect <laughs> us to accept them. Usually headlines, usually uh, illogical, not just probably wrong. So, fleas are born pregnant. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. Alright. Okay. See? On we go. So- See, that's true and you're not impressed. Cause it doesn't involve a little werewolf child. Or half man, half shark. So you, you're just not- it's not good enough for you. No, but what I- what, I- if I read the first line of something and it's not- not that interesting, I go, next, right, and I move <laughs> on. Now when I saw a woman had a baby, and it had a baby, I but go, you still Ooh. didn't read on. No, but I, all right, I didn't read on. But it got me thinking. Like I said, it's you, you wonder about the parents' evening. I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, is it a good thing? 
<laughs> because you're gonna spend more time with the kid. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of mums who have to go out of work and that. She's gonna be a great mum. Grew up with her, literally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so She's I, gonna I'm be wonder a great mum! I, I just wonder if, I know it sounds weird, but if was it's- it, Was it, was it, was it the, 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 you know the baby that woman had, was that a girl or a boy? Well, it would've been a girl, wouldn't it? Of course it, it would. It'd be mental, wouldn't it, if it wasn't? Right. It would've been a weird story, wouldn't it? So anyway, that reminded me because we were talking about other amazing stuff that Ricky told me to find out about. Steve, are you aware of bonobos? We mentioned them earlier, I'm not particularly familiar with bonobos. Right. It sounds like a cream cake. No, they were, they were, um, a, a, a sort of a, a chimpanzee, but more advanced than the, the, the traditional chimpanzee. There's a, they live, uh, uh, in one sort of particular area. And, um, you know, it's the sort of closest animal to the missing link. They're very intelligent. They take on a lot of social aspects of, um, human. They have sex for, um, pleasure mm -hmm. and no other. Steve's looking uh, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> He's done, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what did you find so out about Apparently, him? I found out it's 98% not human, this kind of thing. It's nearly human, but it's not. We share 98% of DNA yeah, with it. Yeah, 98%. Yeah. It's a higher percentage um, than you. <laughs> <laughs> they have sex for pleasure. <laughs> they do look a bit like him, though. They've got a little round head, haven't they? But, and they um, sort of, they're much more upright than the, you know, they've got a more well, flexible. I, I sort of get bored with animals that are like classed as being intelligent, right? So when you tell them- <laughs> <laughs> I get bored with them. Cause yeah. they're not doing enough, they're exactly. not playing no, no. Nintendo. Do you know, do you know like that people always rave on about dolphins saying, yeah. oh they're really bright and that. Yeah. You know, um, I was having an argument with Suzanne about it and she goes, oh yeah dolphins are really intelligent. And I said, but what? What have they done? So <laughs> she said, <laughs> well they, they use them in wars, they strap bombs to the back to go out to boats. Yeah. So then blow up the boats. Mm. Yeah. yeah. They've trained, yeah. Well that isn't that bright. If it was really bright, it'd go, I'm not doing that. Well, no, they leave them. They don't blow themselves up. They, ang anyway, but- All Right, well. So anyway, so bonobos, um, really bright and that. Mm. Now, I was looking at them, mm. and they are, you know, they, they're saying, they, they, you know, they, they're just like humans, basically, right? Mm. What I was thinking is, I didn't have a chance to ask you, um, if you got a mentalist, Right. And put the bonobo in what an exam. Mean, what, okay, right, okay. What do you mean a mentalist? What do you mean? Well, you know, someone who's, you know, a little bit, a, just a little bit slower than me, and put an put them in an exam, what would happen? Right, okay, you've got to be clearer here, Carl. What, what are you saying? Are you saying pit the wits of a bonobo against someone who's educationally subnormal? Yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> I, again, I don't know where to start. I, no, but that, if they're that good, why aren't they being used in, uh, in labour and stuff? Do you know what I mean? What, it, what, in the, in the late, what do you mean, in no, the government? No, like, you know, like, <laughs> some, some jobs that they could do. Why well, haven't someone could, caught onto it and thought, well, hang on a minute. Sorry, I, I'm not familiar with the bonobo. Seriously, could it do a job of work? How, how advanced are these creatures? Well, uh, lots of animals do job of work. I, I think Carl wants this bonobo to start going to work at, uh, with an umbrella and a bowler hat and uh, have sort of like rudimentary language skills like morning, <laughs> morning. <laughs> so, the bonobo, so I couldn't employ the bonobo to be my PA. It's um, not. I mean, how advanced are they? Could could I no. could I teach you to go in the shops and collect something? Well, and bring yeah, it home? but you can teach a dog to do that. Yeah. It depends what you mean by intelligence, social interaction, uh, also dexterity capability, you know. Could uh, it produce this show? <laughs> yes! I, I just thought it could, <laughs> randomly. Yeah. Uh, um, just by pressing the buttons it could do a better it, job. It's, it depends what you're asking, Carl. It, it, well, I mean, what you mean is, it can a, could a chimp be a thick human at an intelligence test? Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. But it depends yeah. on what the problem with the with the human is, doesn't it? Right. Well, first of all, mental illness has nothing to do with intelligence. Let's get that straight. That's one thing. Mental people aren't necessarily less or uh, intelligent than people. Now, is that the clinical term? <laughs> well, exactly. A mentalist. <laughs> mentalist. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to start with wh where he's going wrong with the question <laughs> to answer it to find and find out what he really means. Because it's just that if that did happen, right? So what if did what could happen? You want the Planet of the Apes, right. don't you? Here we go. Here we go. Go on. Right. I go to school. I go to a new school. Yeah. I go in the class. There's three bonobos sat <laughs> on the back row. Yeah. 
Right? I think it would make They're everybody- kids, are they? Everybody would work harder because you go, well, I don't want a monkey beating me. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas when I was so you think school, they'd be an incentive? Yeah. Well, I- yeah, I, I think- They go and they go, oh, go on, what do you mean? No, I would- I, I would have loved it. Cause, I mean, one of the reasons I didn't like school is it's like, oh, I'm not bothered. You know, I'm not bothering going in today. I'd love it if- if I went in and someone said, right, you're gonna start coming again, why is that? Got three bonobos in your class. What if they didn't hang out together, like the two little um, kids with the webbed hands well, and the big heads? What, what if they started bullying you, <laughs> stealing your pocket money, oh, maybe go in, maybe going. copying you, make, maybe making you do their homework? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did find out. You to be honest, it would <laughs> probably be the other way round. <laughs> I need to score better. <laughs> yeah. Have <laughs> you been copying? <laughs> Have you been copying the bonobos? Have again? you been copying Boo Boo again? <laughs> oh, good though, isn't it? <laughs> it I, well, it'd be great. I love. I, I wish I could live in your mind for just a day. So it must be great when you walk around and see things. We were talking before, right, about, um, at school for some- I can't remember why it came up, the frog thing. <laughs> but they- they did a- th oh, I'll tell you what it was, it's the march that's on today, right? And, um, I, I, you know, if people want to do that, that's fair enough, but I, 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 I don't like going out in big crowds and what have you. Sure. He um, said, he said there's too many people to get anything done, right? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't do anything with more than five people. <laughs> do you I know said, what I mean, Steve, if you have a night out? If there's more than five of you, you can't talk to everyone. Uh, who's in charge of the night? <laughs> it makes it hard work if you want to nip into a restaurant because you've got to get, like, a table for six. Yeah. So if you're on that march today and you want a coffee- You've got to get a table for 20 seven, seven for one million protesters! <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? If they're Trying walking to work the out street, the bill afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dessert. <laughs> if well, let's just split it a million ways. <laughs> yeah. Should we just split it a million uh, ways? Well, well I didn't have a starter. Start. I need to pay with though. Switch. I didn't have a starter. Can I pay on Switch? Before you know, war breaks out. <laughs> so get it. They're fighting amongst themselves. Dubs, there goes the fear. We got a crack on here. XFM 104.9. We've got to get in Rockbusters and a couple more tracks. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, go for it. This is Rockbusters, the last ever Rockbusters. Right, yeah, it's a uh, accents special one today. <laughs> um, I've done it before in the past using accent, so yeah. Uh, three cryptic clues, initials, email in. You can win. Uh, Do the email address stuff. now, so then take it down and start going. Right, Ricky dot Gervais. <laughs> At xfm.co.uk, right? Yeah. Right, first one. Uh, yeah. the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mam's daughter something. God, oh, dearing me. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mam's daughter something. That's O, the initial O there. Think of a band. Yeah, I've got it already, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, that's easy. Go on, next. Um, second one. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. Right, the person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. The the initial there is T. You don't get A, B, or C with your degree. Well, that's and the final one, the Cockney fella, isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. That's D H. The initials there, D H. So very quickly, the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. God, they're not going to get the second one. Oh, uh, second one. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. Initial T. And the last one, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. D H. Email in Ricky Dotjavez at xfm co uk and win some stuff. Is right. it important that they bear in mind the accents? Does the yeah, will the accent really help them? Of course it will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, of course it will. Not necessarily, course. Yeah. So right, do that right. The Valentine uh, special, Letter to Hermione, one of the greatest love songs ever. And you've got a couple of minutes, please. Do you email know the funny thing is, we haven't even done Monkey News. Oh God. Right. There's nudists going about, playing bowls, <laughs> which we didn't get round to. Are there? Yeah. God. Um. Why are they doing that? They got fed up with volleyball. <laughs> I don't know, it annoyed me when I read it. But Did we'll leave that, maybe we can come back to What that. are they up to? Um, some, some They've got to be careful when they're smoking a pipe and bowling if they're nude. Do you know how, like, nudists annoy me? I saw mm. it in the week that, um. Sorry, what was the- what was the- sorry, sorry, what was the monkey news? Quickly. No, 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 we've got to save monkey news. Let's do that when we, uh, when we next Is it next quick? Call. Is it quick? Going into the record? Uh, what, the monkey news? Is it quick? Yeah. I, I can tell it to you quick. Quick then. Right. Jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Go. Shambles. Hurry up! There's a monkey in India, right? On a, uh, railway station. Waiting for the train. <laughs> Oh, don't mess about because I've got to get through it quick. <laughs> There's monkeys, monkeys sat there, 
and uh, this robber nicks somebody's handbag or something, <laughs> goes running off down the platform, the police are chasing him, monkey steps in, trips the fella up, pins him down, police come and arrest the fella. He tripped over the monkey. Okay, play a record. He didn't. He tripped over the monkey. The monkey was waiting for a train. He tripped over the monkey. The monkey was waiting for a train. He tripped over the monkey. Did you check okay. the timetable? Okay, leave it. Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. Well, we're all getting stressed here. We're gonna run out of time again. We, we haven't had enough answers. We left it so late. We had so much rubbish to pack in. You did it on purpose. What? What do you mean? You did it on purpose. What left- I love Rockbusters. I think it's the highlight of the week. Mm. But- uh, I remember again. in the early days of Rockbusters, we used to get reams of emails. Do you know how many we've had today? Go on. Two. Yeah, because we've just done it in the last link, and people have to think about it and do research. They have that. to guess because oh. it, it, I, I, don't, I don't think XF and Family Fortunes is gonna <laughs> be a success. Don't knock XF Family Fortunes, Carl. <laughs> it ran on ITV for years. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well. <laughs> yeah. So, has anyone got any white, Carl? Well, we what we'll have to just do. Just as well, we haven't got any prizes to give away anyway, because yeah, we, we gave have, them away our next month. Yeah, we're we? coming through now. Let's see. Just hang on a minute. Well, this isn't radio. You can't just sit here looking at a computer screen going, hold on, hold on. That isn't radio. Right, well, it'll have to be the one who got the closest, right? Okay, what, uh, who got the closest? What are the answers? Give right. us some again. Right, oh. the, the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mates, his, his mum's daughter something. <laughs> I'm so glad this is the last one ever. This is the last, I promise, it's the last rockbuster ever. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. That was O. Yeah, I know that. What was it? Oasis. Oasis? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that was the northern lad. Oh, that, that works. That works, though. Go on, what's the next one? This is what worries, this one worries me. Go on. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. No idea. That was T. Go on. Toto. Two two. <laughs> <laughs> a C as well. Just made it up. A C. <laughs> two two. I, I I love it. I love it. Toto. Toto. Well, Toto. Toto. Well, no. Did anyone get Toto. that? Toto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are that. joking. I just saw it on an email. Right, come on. Like that. What right, was the last okay. one? Uh, last one. Uh, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything is going wrong. Going back in time a bit. The initials D H. Going back in time a bit. Yeah, that for the for the song. It's not a sort of. Oh right, song. I, was, I remember. I, I thought I didn't hear that the first time round. Uh, Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. The initials with D H. Yeah. That was Dan Hill. Dan Hill. <laughs> right. Dan Hill. Nobody got that one. That's that's a tricky one. But Steve, do you want to pick someone who got a couple? No. I mean, I imagine Dan Hill was on everyone's lips. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. People... I think I know about music, but I don't know who Dan Hill is. Sometimes when we touch. Yeah. The uh, honesty is too much. It's an awful ballad from about 1973. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, no one would get Dan Hill. Did anyone get Dan Hill? Well, I don't know, Steve. You are just. I'm not going to check. I can't be bothered. I just want to celebrate that it's over. I'm just pleased that we're finished with Rockbusters. Uh, um, uh, what? Right. Did anyone get it? I don't know. <laughs> no, I've, I've got, got to check. Put that one back. <laughs> I want to hear that answer again. <laughs> what? Uh, Carl, leave the mouse alone and let me find that one. Right. That is someone's contempt for you. Yeah. They've put Oasis, fair enough. Second one, Travis, they've just gone. Third one, Oliver Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> They don't care. <laughs> That's how much contempt <laughs> people have. That's what's the answer. What's the answer? N-E-R-D? Yeah. Provider. Oh. I hope the ceremonies weren't listening to that. I'm not gonna come in for a couple of weeks. That's- <laughs> I'm not gonna be here next okay, week. Okay, no, 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 leave it a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right, just, I uh, think we should just take a break. Everyone should just take a break Do, do a special or a best of, Carl, cos this is- Well, I've gotta go away and rethink this whole thing, cos I'm- I think it's actually probably damaging our reputation. Definitely. Definitely. What are you gonna do next week? Are you gonna come in? Carl? I'll, I'll have to be here to play it out, won't I? Play yeah, it. right, because uh, we didn't- we didn't give the winners the competition, we've- I mean, it- uh, oh, see you later. Yeah, I'm not gonna be here. Excellent. Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday, just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken, but we're not here, no. as such, we're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around, uh, yeah. um, we've got to do the special, sort of, best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had, <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah, um, some great music as well in there. Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah, yeah. And we've done a few clips, just because we felt a bit guilty about 
shooting off. Yeah. And I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last thirty years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like- <laughs> Life in the fifties. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Like, yeah, in the forties, <laughs> it was brilliant, all sat around the old Joanna's, the bombs <laughs> yeah. singing, they loved that. In the fifties, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years, it was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together, and then the sixties came along, all the crazy music, the funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And uh, this must have been, I don't know, twenty years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that, he said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's what you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for it's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. How, he finds out, how is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is for, uh, such a weird uh, mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked I potato to take well, to I, school. I, I, and no, a poop I, and a stick. It's a Christmas the gift. other thing is, I think that it, it, that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. As a total dependent. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. If she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got thirty years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like you know uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. I mean, yeah. it, it's sort of like that. It's it, it was, it's sad. Of course, it's sad for them, but it's so, not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I, I don't know, know why that is. Yeah, it's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for. Uh, I know. I've really brought you brought it down. You have brought it down. I brought it, this isn't a nice show at all. This is terrible. Well, We're gonna have really people make just it killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, I, I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, he, my dad always said. Oh, he's steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. That's that brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't follow so me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Dad, it's Christmas, do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up, cos she used to like to see me face light up, you know, when, when I opened the presents. And then, uh... You <laughs> missed the key of fireworks. And then, uh... <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards, cos, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties, and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? And, yeah, I remember one year, right, I got got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- Fourteen. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I hadn't even got to Sounds like the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, that is. <laughs> satire, Rick, well. I just thought that then, satire. It's there's any satirical it's, 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 shows it's, it's, listening or- it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, cos there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. Yeah. And the government broke the trains in many, well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah. it's, yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm very pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on, have I got this for you? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Cos it is- It's strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that that, that's as quick as that. Yeah. Well, and it, it's broke your little train set, so what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog yeah, everywhere? Well, no, like but that. I mean, it's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you, you know, he had his fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was. So on Christmas Day, I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. And well, I don't have the party on the Christmas days. Well, that's, that's that's another option. Yeah. yeah, your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I uh, 
Uh-huh. You're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to that. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No, no. So, uh, got me mum. Uh, there was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right. She must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy yeah, Do you remember cure? Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I saw it, I thought, yeah, she'll love that, right? So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Oh. Got that sorted, went to Snips. Bought the, uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in, I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in, and we're looking around, and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there. That's all right, innit? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, oh, God. So then, Christmas Day comes, and I said, oh. don't bother opening it. She said, no, no, why? I said, oh, no! Why well, did you still give it to her? So, well, it's too late. I'd already bought it. Oh, cool. So she opened it, and I was like, <sighs> and she said, oh, that's nice. I said, why are you saying that? I said, the other day, so it's bloody awful. She said, oh, no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Oh, <laughs> no. So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> SFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, <laughs> the Shining. It's, it's more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight, because it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize. Yeah, it's one of those films that... <laughs> so, so wait, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Well, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he does it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Bowen has a go at those his narrow towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then? No? Yes. Good. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. I'll just show you. Just... Well, that's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being, you know, you're not in the mood, are you? you're just going to, you're in one of those grouchy moods again. Like you get... Well, here we are again, XFM on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm-hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Yeah. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago. So this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well, isn't there? Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. But except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and leaving. I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty th- wore off of like- <laughs> just, Life in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Like, yeah, in the 40s, <laughs> it was brilliant. All sat around the old Joanna's and Bob's <laughs> yeah. Bell singing, they loved that. In the 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years. It was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together. And then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what should I have for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been 
I don't know, 20 years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. He said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's what you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he phones out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, such a weird uh, mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked I potato to take well, to I school. Uh, and no, a poop I, and a stick. A the kid. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the Woman, mm. as a total dependent. Oh, absolutely. If, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes, he's yes. done for. It, yeah. it just pine away. If he dies, she's got thirty years of pottering. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like you know uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. I mean, yeah. it, it's sort of like that. It's it, it was sad, it's sad. Of course, it's sad for them, but it's sort of not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for. Uh, I know. I've really brought you brought it down. You've brought it down. I've brought it, this isn't a nice show at all. This is terrible. Well, We're gonna have really people just killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, my dad always said. Oh, he's steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. That's got brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't follow so me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, <laughs> Dad. It's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see me face light up. You know when I, when I opened the presents. And then, uh, <laughs> to keep the fireworks. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties, and I wasn't like old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun now. You go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I remember one year, right? I got got a train set. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Right. It's brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought I don't mind about the party. I'm happy staying up here playing with this. Brother comes in. He's had a few, right? He's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like you? that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- 14. <laughs> something like that, yeah. right? So, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, give us a go. He turns the transformer up to like 14. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I ain't even got Sounds like the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, <laughs> <laughs> Satire, Rick, well. I just saw that then. Satire. <laughs> it's if there's saying. any satirical it's, it's, shows it's, listening or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, because there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though. British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many ways. Well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah. It's yeah, it does work. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on Have I Got News For You. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because it, it is strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that, that <laughs> that's as quick as that. Yeah. Right. And it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and then, did, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join the festive fun. Was it, it like really the borch down there? Was it like eggnog yeah, everywhere? Well, no, like but that. I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you, you know, he had those fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was. on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. And well, I don't have the party on the Christmas Day. Well, that's, that's that's another option. Yeah. yeah, your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, I used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum. <laughs> <laughs> on oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed device. that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always find yeah. that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone. Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed, then you'll go, alright. Um, 
But when you're on your own, you go. You oh, just forget to go to bed. You I go just to... stay up. Okay, I'll... stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food. That's just the plate. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, I just I, I stayed up and watched. Um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not not the fact that is the living dead and is. <laughs> No. Nope. And drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he in mirrors. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, you can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Well, that still doesn't work. Go okay, on. go it on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work Come anyway. on. <laughs> well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> B blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre part is too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was the it's, real Dracula. It's the real Dracula. Dracula yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. It's just a film. It had blood on the floor or something. It's called. Yeah. 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 We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah, I we, hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl. Right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination. Right, and uh, um, if it involves. Chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little flap of skin, like a little scartly that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like, its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went, instead of, like, thinking this is an amazing experiment, he went, would it- would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned- because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me, you said, of course, one side of the brain deals with, uh, symbolism, and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly, <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I know you took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I know I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said, it. I think I said, chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. and I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah, but yeah. um, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's what what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't put- couldn't do it. Couldn't no, put it's no problem. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, It looks like yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, might explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you're, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. He was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us, evolutionally speaking. They've got, their social, um, groups are more like ours. They're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary the ladder? chimp, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 that was great. <laughs> that was very, very funny. What indeed. a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed it. Do you it. remember that? I, yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was a few weeks ago, <laughs> wasn't it? Really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes. But here, you know, I, I don't give a sh They can bleep that. They will do. They will do. <laughs> Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon then, educate me. Did I tell you the time 
when, uh, <laughs> the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die. All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this- we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a- uh, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or, there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because- you know, they, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free and they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. <sighs> so I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. That was eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be a chocker. Now, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> <That's> master <Crawford. laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. Right, so <laughs> I'd have, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon really, right? So, you'd do that and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, uh, if anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd just, once yeah. or twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. yeah so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, what was, were the frog boys there with the, with the webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the set, uh, yeah. But the day after one of these days, they had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Okay. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> you could hardly stagger to the free cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. He gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. He's, you know, the doctor's only ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. <laughs> So she said, yeah. She said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. She didn't go into details. Well, can I, you explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream donuts. All oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on. short story, so, right, uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What could, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can fold you. I'm, I'm honest. Not, right, I, no, I, I, listen. Okay, no, 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 serious. Me, okay, Carl. I'll tell you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, you're talking 
I, I've never had, had a such bu- What do you mean you couldn't believe it? No, when I read it, I said, I've got to uh, tell Ricky This that. woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years, you mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. <laughs> Is a blinding record, and before that, Rick, what do you make of those adverts? They were great, weren't they? I like them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to buy all them products on the way home. And that's endorsed by Ricky Gervais. He's won awards. Yeah, Rick, do you remember this? This was a hilarious. No, movie. no, you remember this when you hear yeah. it. Uh, it was when Carl said something that was basic. Well, I think for a lot of people, it sounded like a lot of old bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got now? <laughs> right, so we, we look into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoke to someone about jellyfish, and that, and, uh, looking at cockroaches today. She's an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, well, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's a one-day night's bridge, it's got dinosaurs and that, and it's worth seeing. And that's the history museum? Yeah. So, uh... He's <laughs> not sure. He's <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it, we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, that I found out is that, um, that they have a 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knees and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? I, I think you're grasping at straws or something. All right. Well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for forty minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body. So, um, no, if they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got the mouth shut, they might be able the to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So Only just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and so got bored after forty again, minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it right." Kind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No. Pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach something else I found out, yeah. they can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't sleep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous, but yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? <laughs> Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your f to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that would be a useful facility. I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over three hundred million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. Right. Well, I've also. Um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently, they can sort of rest for seventy five percent of the time. Rest. Yeah, they just just set about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, not. maybe maybe the twenty five uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make probably up. Probably searching out food, and um, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge, and they'll become very very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure you know if if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we? You know. Well, I, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. 
I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yeah. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean 18 knees, where did you get that from? It was, uh, it was on the uh, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? Well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9, you've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais show with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see, we're- this is pre-recorded, we recorded this last week, cos we're away, and it's sort of like the best of- best of the last three weeks, since last time we were away when we put out the best of. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the next educating well, wiki? I don't know, uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right, I was looking on the web- But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh- um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know- Where do you read that? That was on the internet. Oh, oh. Well, yeah. Um, y you're always unspec unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 then... Go! You are. No, I did, I did, no, honestly. I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came yeah. up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight year old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what? You, I put in why? Just, Just to confuse, confuse the computer. computer. <laughs> like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying so much stupid, and I went, I've got a conversation for next week, let's do a phone-in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, yeah. right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing, because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do they, don't they? No, that's, no, no, that? but it's rubbish, and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and, uh, you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's... His mum's milk. What are you ta what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just... A title <laughs> for the, the story... No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? Right. What do you mean, I what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right. the eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, Mr. Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, this yeah. eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and it's saying, is this right? Should it No, it's not. There? But what, 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 <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? <laughs> so, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. 
No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, All right, son. She whops one out <laughs> Um and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you live you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on yeah. him. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I'd go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid sure. at a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's breast, right. right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. It's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see. <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never. <laughs> oh! So what? Oh, <laughs> you, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve? Is he's right. You don't see an old no, man. No, I know, that's but, a terrible but, thing. But, so what they have got, right? They've made old man's hoffies, haven't they? They've come up with burgers. <laughs> Is, is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him. You think he's giving a lecture at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, yeah. go on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure, when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right. So he's having. <laughs> So, right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gives, <laughs> give, get me a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> FM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, he'd go, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw yeah. it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh**. It why, why didn't someone tell me? Well, we we didn't want to upset you because, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long. Will you could just let me go on forever? Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just, why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these shows, they're not funny. There's an audience, they're laughing. What are they laughing They're not at? laughing, they're not, they're not laughing. That's kind of laughter. Who are those audience? Who, who goes to an audience for it'll be right on the night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know, we have a fifteen percent fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> but I went, r I went home at Christmas. I watched one of the episodes, yeah. which was my family and friends. I said, "Watch this, you'll love it." Stony face. No one laughed. They all thought it was. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me earlier? You didn't want to hurt your feelings. You're an old man. You may be upward of one hundred and two. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Mm -hmm. We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you, it could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that, or it could just be a personal dilemma. You know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have 
you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into parked cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like when a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Do you sure. know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the were nice as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, uh, right. And Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. Mean, the but thing is, I was I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed the himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door and I thought, <laughs> oh God, this is the fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how I could throw it. <laughs> of you he, were. He Did he keep landing on your head? <laughs> That would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Junking up, uh, stone in the air, love <laughs> to it. To see how far I it's could brilliant. throw. It's brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent it. that game? Right. Did so you get anyway. a stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle. And it, it, of course it did. It ate the back of this, uh car and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it yeah, in case you've got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. Genius. It's <laughs> a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. I yeah. couldn't be guilty. I'm asleep. So, so, I love the idea. So uh. the thing is our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family who, uh, <laughs> yeah, have saw me do it. Let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said go and get the door and I sort of went oh as if I'd been asleep yeah. and went to the door like rubbing my eyes and uh, the fella said what did you run off for I saw you I was like oh no and I didn't see my dad I went out it was when he was working sort of evenings so I went out so I didn't have to see my dad and then the next day I came from, I came home from school and my dad said 45 quid Oof. that's all he said that's he looked at me and then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, no, <laughs> yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl, is, he, right. he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. So, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> right, uh, Okay, look, quick um, query for you, this is from uh, Jay, he's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies, he's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't want to do so. He's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with. It's actually not your type. Right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah. put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> That's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. <laughs> um, <laughs> went along, I wanted to learn some moves. How old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? 
but you've told me before you what you did boxing for a while you did dancing for a while you had a true fight in the boxing you didn't <laughs> even get in the that's not an you, yeah, imagine if that was a film this is <laughs> um, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer <laughs> oh it's shut next on i mean you, how is that a story yeah, that was billy elliot do you think he won, <laughs> it won quite many awards yeah yeah a brilliant footloose all right <laughs> yeah. i'm fed up they banned it let's go oh it's shut um, <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. flash dance first there was <laughs> oh, it's a warehouse <laughs> never mind you I'm, I'm just saying you know you'll find something else i, I can't i think i got a go-kart after that <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and <laughs> kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's, always, there's always all those just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He uh, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's uh, that. So that's that solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee, uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice Sorry, there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not if she's not ugly. minging yeah. she's not uh, completely minging yeah uh and don't worry about dancing get a go-kart <laughs> <laughs> This is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamais with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. <laughs> you don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much? Not really. No. You know, I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. And you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Is there yeah. a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Proved your point. So, so, so yeah. when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of, uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of, like, input and... I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got, like, a, a question on anything, the internet's that there, I can just go on online and find out. The internet I'm is is good. It's brilliant. But it, it's not all verified. It's not all factually necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the you know, that's it's it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh she was a bit of a punk. And um to get her hair done like she wanted it. Super glue. Right, no. She got lard. Apparently, it's a popular thing. You might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, apparently, the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave. Right. It doesn't. It's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things. You know, like the little catch. So, so the microwave works, she jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crow, when he dies, is is given his, his brain to charity or something, some sort of <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh uh, boil in a skull. Yeah. That's that's not true. It's no. not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to you can tell an urban myth not to really go, because it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and, and, and then when you say what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates, locations, have you, have it, times? Have, I think it was in Belgium. There's that, there's that, there's that one, <laughs> there's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof of his office and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story? 
as he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour. He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he wait, as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in <laughs> just case. In case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. <laughs> and this, and what sort of, what sort of bloke is that? Uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business, well, call me anyway. No, no. If I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, you yeah. could commit suicide. <laughs> commit suicide. <laughs> I would, because if I don't call it four, <laughs> uh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> Why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you I would do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case someone goes wrong? What if he's engaged? If you want to be engaged, <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it it didn't happen, Carl. And the, the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's he's on a uh, train station, and uh, uh, I say oh, I heard it. Um, uh, he's uh, uh, he's waiting for a crew station, whatever, and um, he shits himself. Uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need- <laughs> So he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, 36. The bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the, the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. He's soiled. Yes. Throws them out of the window, I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off, open the bags, it's a jacket! Oh. No, he didn't have one, Carl! He didn't have at what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair? No, 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 shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. Do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> uh, well, 36 <laughs> white stories, well, well, not, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> they put yes. it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I don't oh. want to discuss it further. Yeah. There's one, um... There we go. <laughs> there's one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, and she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Mm. And she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That is a true story, again. It was all... No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. <laughs> Head story, true. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <coughs> Lily White. It's, it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers? Yeah. Big sound. <laughs> beautiful day. You too, to kick off the show, Steve. Absolutely. The Ricky Gervais Show with Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Claire Sturgis. Oh, hello, Diggs. boys. Carl's ill. Well, he's not here. I, I mean, I never believe people when they're like, I think yeah. they're always malingering. I never t take any days off work. I just think you can drag yourself in unless it's, unless it's life threatening well, or- to, to, to be fair, Rick, can I just stop you there? Um, yeah. It's not so much that you take days off as you'll just suddenly decide around lunchtime that you've overeaten and yeah. you need to go and lie down. But I'm my own with boss. With a cold compress. <laughs> yeah, but I'm my own boss. <laughs> I'm my own boss. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not so much you take room. days off. It's not so much you take days off as you never actually do a full day's work. <laughs> yeah. You actually exactly. prevent that. I never, well. I never take that hour and a half off a day. <laughs> exactly. Um, XFM 104.9. So what's the story, Claire? Do you know anything about Carl? Do you know what his, his no, illness is? No, I, I think he's got this, uh, this sort of cold virus that's uh -huh. going around. He phoned me yesterday. He did sound poorly in mm. his defence. Poorly? A croaky. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. He I'm coughed not, a bit. I'm not being funny. He better be in hospital. To miss take, this show. To miss this show. Flagship show of the week on XFM. Do you know, you are right, because, uh, and you've been away, haven't you? You've know, been away two weeks. Jack. We had the best off yeah. again. But best part of the best of. Yeah. Best part of the best of the last two weeks. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we're going to try and get him on the phone. We're going to phone him and, and, and I want him to really explain himself because, you know, I think he's malingering to be honest. Well, so. he phoned me in the week and he said, uh, Steve, don't forget there's a documentary on on Friday night about Oliver the Humanzi, the yeah. human monkey. He yeah. said, he said to me, it's gonna be brilliant. And it wasn't. And it wasn't brilliant. It was, <laughs> I've, I've especially stayed in and watched it. I, I taped it and watched it afterwards and I've never seen so much hype and desperation. They kept showing the same clip of this, definitely this chimpanzee yeah. that, that walked upright like a lot of chimps can. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, it uh, lost its hair, so it was half human because all humans are bald. Yeah. yeah. So that's the half human bit. It didn't have hair. I'm sorry, humans do have hair on their heads. Yes. The other thing was this this desperation to go. Could it be half chimp? No. 
It's a chimp that superficially looks less like a chimp than other chimps. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Lee Evans looks a bit like a chimp. Is he half chimp, half human? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a human who looks a bit like a chimp. That's yeah. libelous. Yeah. That's a bit insulting, Evans isn't it? Should we just play some music? Yeah, now? I'm really okay. sorry about that. I'll oh. get back to you on that. Yes. Tick-tock, that's Coldplay and Clocks <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Can, can I tell you a Coldplay coming yeah. in a couple of weeks' time to a co-host Zoe Ball show? Right, one, don't ever interrupt me. Two, don't tell them about other people's shows. No. Okay, moving on, thank Please you. Please do not mention that there are any other television celebrities on yeah. this channel, on this yes. station. We are trying to convince people it's only Ricky. But the interruption was the main thing. Sorry, um, sorry. Well, we can't get hold of Carl, right? We looked, he's got his ha old number out there. Uh, 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 what, his home number? Yeah, it's a hold on. Right. So, uh, we went to the new records. He hasn't even given him his, his new home number. So, something's funny going on. He doesn't want to be contacted. He hasn't given me his home number. I've tracked down a friend who's looking it for us. That phone might ring any moment. I apologise for that. But why is Carl not available? It's interesting that neither you or I, and I like to think of ourselves as being fairly close friends of Carl. Yeah. We have made him the man he is today. We yeah. cannot get in touch with him. In, we the, same way, in the same way that that bloke bought Oliver. Sure. I think that Carl is now ours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, he, yeah, exactly. I think very much that's true, yeah. Yeah. Carl is very much a if human we, Z. If we look, we're, we're, we're gonna lose contact with him and find him five years in a circus in Manchester. Exactly. They're doing experiments on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they're going, we, we can't we, figure him out. Yeah. Well, he's, there's something wrong he with his He looks like a human, he but... He he acts like a... because usually humans stand upright. Yeah. And Carl likes to walk on all fours whenever he can. Yeah. It's he's not interested in other human women, he's only interested in apes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. sense. Oh my god. And he's bald. He is bald. <laughs> oh look, this, there's as much evidence and for Carl being a human Z as Oliver. Yeah. I think there's more. I think there's more. And, oh. Well, Carl barely walks upright. I know. He's scared of fire. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just, it is interesting, isn't it? Oliver was built, wasn't he? Yeah. I, see, I, 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 I don't know. Was, yeah, Why were you looking, Rick? I'm interested to... I'm interested uh, that you, yeah. you, I couldn't, what, what, your eyes were kind of uncontrollably uh, drawn see, towards him? just his... there. No, I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at his face. No, I... <sighs> Uh, oh. Sorry, Rick, but if there's something you uh, want to get off your chest, yeah, and that's that was the human part of it, then was it being built like that? Because yeah. it's humans, but yeah. although Carl's is very tiny and hidden behind, <laughs> and he's got I've noticed him else as well. He's got a big red ass. That's true, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's all beginning to slot into place. That's, and I've seen him t climb up a, a cabinet and eat a banana as yeah. well, just to yeah. have a lunch and time. peel it with his toes. <laughs> It's all coming together. Yeah. Right, we're gonna <laughs> track him down, cos I, I, he's malingering, he's definitely malingering. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he's, he's at home now, in the garden, swinging on his tyre. <laughs> he's not ill. <laughs> I think more truthfully, someone said to me, uh, I said, uh, Carl might be ill, they said, right, are you not gonna do the radio show then? Well, that's what annoys me. I mean, that's the biggest but, problem, is that, yeah. let's be honest, we haven't got anything without Carl. All Carl's. we've got is the hook, people are staying listening, cos eventually they think we might get through to him at home, yeah. and there'd be fun on this show to be had. If we don't get in touch with Carl, I think we may as well just shoot off and leave Claire to do the show. I've got own. some great music. Is that not a? Well, it's, a, it's a small. small you could leave uh, the music with me. I could just play it's it. It's not really reaching the end of the year. Okay, we'll, we'll play some great music yeah, now. Play it, Rachel. Okay, wedding sure. presents, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I'll explain what it is afterwards. Just play it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a joy. It's a monkey. There's a monkey theme. There is a monkey. There is a monkey, there is a monkey theme. connection. Call in if you know the answer. <laughs> Doing their cover version of Pleasant Valley Sunday. That's from sure. this new uh, compilation of those. Uh, remember, they brought out a load of seven inches. Of course, in I, did. Of course I did. Of course what I did. One of one of my. It was my favourite day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, uh, oh. and on the B, B, do you remember on the B side of each one there was a cover of a different song? Steve, I even played the B side of each one <laughs> and listened to the song. <laughs> the connection <laughs> there that we're talking about was, of course, it was by the Monkeys. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. yeah. They, they turned up in yesterday's episode, didn't they? Oh. A, a lot of people, I'm sure, won't have seen this documentary. It was on Channel Five after all. Oh, so yeah. I always feel like we should uh, remind people that uh, what, what we're actually talking about. If we just happen to mention Oliver, a lot of people don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, if we explain that it is the uh, primate version of Carl. Yeah, that's exactly. That's sort of shorthand, isn't it? Yeah, the half. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, they were on a Japanese- The, 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 the human Z. The human Z. He was on a, a Japanese uh, TV show with- uh, they were doing experiments on him to find out if he was half human and the monkeys happened to be there. Yeah. Mickey Dolan saying, you know, I'm quite interested to find out because, you know, I'm a monkey. Oh, one of the brilliant. monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> it was wow. utterly bizarre. Of course, we, um, we've been off jetting around the world, Claire, I don't know. I don't, oh, I don't want to boast. I'm sure you don't no, want to boast I, either. Carl but, told um, me you'd been off, you know, off to the States. Yeah, that was the reason we weren't here the last couple of weeks that we went to, uh, Los business Angeles. Business or pleasure? It was a little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure. Mm. You know, I like to combine the two. Um, um, nice. It was, um, we were, um, uh, meeting, uh, uh, a company about doing the office for America. Um, yeah. Actually redoing it. Yeah, yeah not, not, redoing not with it with you or any of the cast. No. With American actors. American actors do it, yeah. But the so. thing was, they, they, they were flying us over here. It was like the whole business class trip, you know, spending a little bit of money. And, uh, Virgin I, Upper Class, actually. Virgin Upper Class. I'd excellent. like to recommend, nice. recommend it. Excellent. Excellent. It's, it's brilliant. Very good show. Definitely get free flights now. Easy. Yeah, definitely. Easy. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, Richard Branson, lovely bloke. And I love Stupid Bells. I don't, so I, don't, well, I, don't, I, don't I don't think he owns it anymore. Does he not? But he's still a lovely bloke. He's still a good bloke. What does he own? He must own something we can get. Oh, does he roll with Virgin Records anymore? <laughs> Wouldn't have thought so. No, no, V2. Well, what does yeah. he do? V2. And Virgin V. What's that? Right. Virgin V's some Is that beauty, beauty products or Brilliant. something. Brilliant. What about what? Virgin what? Underwear? Brilliant. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, give us some of that. Give us some of that, Branson. Give us some of that. But I was uh, going to New York before going on to Los Angeles, where all the news was just for a little, uh, just meet some friends over in New York. And, uh, it's amazing, because, uh, Virgin Business Class, they pick you up in a sort of chauffeur-driven car, they drive you down, there's no bot, you don't have to check in upper with class. all the wish- Virgin Upper Class, it's like, for, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, you don't need to w sort of queue up with the great unwashed, no. with screaming kids, with ordinary people. Yeah. You yeah. know, basically, yeah. You, yeah. you get, you, they just send your information ahead to the airport, and you just drive through, a kind of drive through McDonald's-style check-in, they take your bag, they check your passport, or boom, they drop you at the executive lounge where there are, I swear to God, lovely free plums. I had two lovely juicy free plums in the executive. I haven't eaten plums for if years. He forgets, he forgets the bloke's name, but they had, <laughs> he had lovely juicy <laughs> free plums. All right, that, that's the sort that of that is why that's the sort of wit that I'm capable of. That I heard is why the word he is plum. flying first class. <laughs> he meant, to America. He meant to suck the fruit. I changed. I transposed the whole thing so suddenly he was sucking on a man's testicles who he'd never met before. Exactly <laughs> for money. Exactly that's the sort of things I'm capable of. Which is of. only half true. <laughs> So he's used his there comedy was mind. no money involved. Right. That is why he was being jetted off to America to yeah. talk comedy. That is the kind of quality. But it was get. it was great. It was a really lovely flight. It was a lovely car, luxury car, and the the flight. It was like the advert. I've, they've got those beds that sort of just well, the, yeah, the totally seats recline. Kind of recline, so it's almost and you, can you sleep got anything you want as much. And I was sort of like I was falling asleep, and I sort of woke up, and uh, one of the heiresses was like covering me with a blanket. It was like the advert. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. just brilliant. All the lights came down. Oh, and everyone comes around and says, "Do you want a massage during the flight?" You can have, a uh, you can have as much flight. drinks, although you can't oh. drink, you have a drink and then you fall asleep because yeah. it's so comfortable and they take the lights. So, so anyway, anyway it's I can't believe my luck. So I'm driving down, <laughs> I get to the airport in my chauffeur driven car, right, I'm sat there, I'm phoning people, my mum and dad, you never believe what I'm off to. Just say, I'm just in a car, just chauffeur driven car. And I get to the airport and I, they, you just hand your passport through the window of this car to this little woman who comes over. And I'm just there, I'm just sort of buzzing the window down, handing it to her, buzzing it back up, like I don't want to talk, check the passport, take my luggage, I don't want to discuss things. You know who I am. And she hands the passport back through the window. She says, it's expired. <laughs> oh! I went, you are? What are you doing? She went, it's expired. I thought, I said, it's business class. What can you do? Can you do anything? And she went, no, you, we can send you to America, but eight hours later, you'll have to just turn around and come back. They won't let you through immigration. And I was like, what are you gonna do? I gotta go to Los Angeles and talk about, like, the office and that. And she said, uh, well, it's such you. So, um, the chauffeur-driven car drove me straight to the passport office down, uh, in sort of, uh, Victoria, which I have to you say- back into town? So I had to come back into town. I didn't get on a plane. I'm wearing my suit because I thought I'd wear the suit so I look like a real player. So I'm wearing I my suit. I love the fact that you wore a suit. I wore a track suit because yeah, I well, thought I don't need to work, get upgraded. I'm first class. Exactly. I, 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 I was- I wanted to go on in my pants and slippers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, with- fact, Wasn't that why she covered you with a blanket at one point? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so they take me back down to, uh, the passport. I don't know if you've had to go down and get your passport changed, but it, they treat you like you are an illegal immigrant, yeah. sneaking yeah. into the country. Yeah. I'm wearing a suit, I've got luggage, you know, I've cl I'm clearly a dignified kind of guy, that's obvious. I'm speaking with a certain eloquence, I've got certain powers. <laughs> I'd just been working on it in the car. Oh, right, okay. And, um, <laughs> and they just, and they said, you've got to come back that night. So I had to come back. I had to, I had to get my passport. It got me. Done. I had to buy a sandwich. I had enough change for the machine because it was not, a, it was an absolute nightmare. I ended up, I spent, I began the day in a chauffeur driven car on my way to Los Angeles to discuss business with, uh, Universal Television Pictures, and I spent, I ended the day on the tube, <laughs> in a suit, with my luggage, stood next to one of the posters advertising this radio show, <laughs> which was just embarrassing because people kept pointing and staring and laughing. He called me, called me, like they said, Rick, I've really much, I go, go on, he went, I put my passport as well, I went, oh, so what are you gonna do? He went, 
he said, right, I quote, he went, I didn't know passports expired. Yeah. I went, what do you mean? I went, he went, well, your driving license doesn't. I went, what are you talking about? He said, how old do you have to be to know that? He said, <laughs> he said, when will I know all these things? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is. When will I know all Steve, these I things? I want to just come and hug you. But uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, did you know oh. that? Did you genuinely know that your passport expired? I did because m um, my passport expired because she's alive. Ago, um, because she's I alive in the world. There is so <laughs> much stuff that I don't know because I don't think I've reached a certain age yet. I remember you walking down the street once and you said there were some roadworks and you said oh, they're probably doing those roadworks because and it's the end of the financial yeah, year they and they've got to spend, spend their budget. I thought, well, how do you know that information? <laughs> <laughs> how do I tell you? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I don't talk to cabs. I, I mean, chauffeur-driven cars. I put the little wind up so they don't talk to me. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Are you old? Are you old enough yet? To help a, a long distance lorry driver back into a car park? Definitely not. Are oh, you an idiot? Play a record. And I'm also, I'm, I'm not old enough yet to be able to say, uh, uh, can I have a pint of lager, please, chief? <laughs> in a pub. <laughs> I wonder how I get to that age. <laughs> no, you're a long way off. Yeah. Another classic there from Oasis, Supersonic on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis standing Hello. in for, Hello. for yeah. Carl. But where is Carl? Where is Carl. So we've failed to get in touch with him at home. Well, it, look, he doesn't do want to be contacted. He's turned up every phone off. He hasn't given the XFM his new home phone number. He doesn't want to be contacted. I can't believe he's not listening, to be honest. So you think he's listening now? Yeah, he listened, he listened in Manchester. If he's not listening, he's out and about. Uh, I mean, has anyone spotted Carl? What's your message to him, Rick, if he's listening? Uh, get, call up. Uh-huh. Anything else more sort of- Call um, up or you're fired. Okay. Any bad language you want to use? Obviously you can't really swear I can't really it. say it. What sort of words? I mean, the F word would you say? I'd say the F word. I'd call him a, um, a twat, um, uh- Would you use the P word? I'm thinking of prick. Prick, yeah. Okay. Definitely <laughs> use that. Not, not, on, not on air, but sure. I'd call him a what stupid about little prick. Would you just say you're a twat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Little- All right. Little- you stupid little bag of tits, I'd yeah, say to yeah, him. Yeah, not, yeah. I mean, privately. What but, about the uh, MF word? Because that's pretty intense. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> do, you never, think that, do you think that this is not appropriate now? <laughs> do you think he's- do you think that would be too- too extreme? I'm worried if I use that- There's and no he was- back. and he was genuinely ill, sure. I'd feel- a bit of a- A C word. Uh, cock, sure. Yeah. Oh, cock. Um, yeah. Because I wasn't thinking about C word. I, I mean, um, I mean a male- Bird. Sure, because we've got in trouble with that before. Meaning penis, and we don't mean that. Yeah, we no. don't mean penis. Um, but if if you do, if anyone out there, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, th th it was a discussion about bad language. We weren't actually using it. But if any of you out there do see the little twat, get him to call <laughs> XFM immediately. Yeah, and likewise, if you're listening, Carl, uh, you cheeky. MF. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you sexy MF, as you, Prince once said. Yeah. Then give us a ring because we'd love to talk to you. We just want to find just out. Just call you are. in. We know you're listening. Little. <laughs> Amy Man. Red Vines. Brilliant. Lovely track. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis, in for Carl Pilkington. Little. <laughs> he hasn't called. He may be Nothing. really ill. I'm feeling a bit. I do, yeah. Oh. How ill is he, though? I mean, do you know what I mean? How ill have you got to be to not be able to make a phone call? Yeah. I find that hard I've to got sore bottom. And I made it in. Keep so. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled a muscle in the bum. How? I don't know. And it really hurts. Have you tried to trace back through the week and figure out what yeah, made it? Yeah, I went to see the osteopath yesterday. Uh -huh. He put an elbow in it for half an hour. I cried. Too. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Oh, they've got detachable elbows for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Prosthetic <laughs> elbows. <laughs> elbows. Just hold this elbow in there for two hours and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can take I get that away? You can take that away. With that. I, don't, <laughs> I won't be needing that elbow <laughs> for quite a while. <laughs> we had an email about uh, Oliver the uh, Humanzi. For those that didn't watch it, there was a documentary last night about a, a chimp that was supposedly a human or was half Carl's human or Carl's favourite program human. ever. Yeah. For a week, Carl has been saying it's gonna be brilliant. Oh, yeah. I wish he was here And to he's not here to discuss it, it sadly, yeah. but um, uh, Lee Cranston has, uh, has emailed in and uh, says, uh, I thought the best part of the Oliver program was the guy Vincent Pace, the oh, camp yeah. fellow at the piano, telling how he first met Oliver. Quote, he grabbed his female owner, turned her around and bent her over and went to mount her. Yeah. I made her an offer to buy him the next day. <laughs> Vincent was then shown in a very nostalgic mood playing melancholic music. He obviously wanted some monkey action. He really, that's, yeah, that's- I mean, it that, is potentially that, liable. That's liable. liable. We, we don't, we, you know, we, you know, it's a joke there, but- We take, I don't take any responsibility for what Lee Cranston says, or indeed the fact that he quite, he puts at the end, did he want to turn Oliver into a gay pansy? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. That's Lee's <laughs> thoughts and opinions, so don't expect to really reflect those of XFM. He sees the, the, the chimp mount a human and go, I've got to have that yeah, chimp. I must have that. I must have that. <laughs> 
Chin. <laughs> oh, poor Carl. Where that, is he? Call as him. you mentioned earlier, he was very well endowed. Apparently, I didn't see it myself. It was a big. It was, a, was big a big boy. Chimp. Big, sure, a big yeah. half boy. <laughs> yeah. A big half boy, half chimp. <laughs> okay. Honestly, Juan on yeah. XFM 104.9. Right, I just called Carl again. I've been calling him all the time, trying to get through to him. Right, he's changed. His message, so he is listening, and I've got proof. So, can you just call the number, Claire? Yeah. Right, right, call the number. Now, listen to this. This is really annoying. Well, we should tell you now that this is not a, uh, an amusing sketch or setup. No. What's happening there, Claire? Not quite happening for you? No, no, this is all right. We'll, we'll try, try that again. Try that again, Claire. Yeah. yeah. I'm livid now. I, it's, uh, it's, I'm genuinely annoyed because you'll see, when you hear the message, you'll realise why. Right. Let's try again. I don't know who he thinks he is now. I, I, I'm beginning to wonder if, if his minor celebrity is going to his head. All this nice write-up in in Heat magazine. Yeah. It's changed him. Richard Anderson, incidentally, has emailed in. Go on, Dickers Anderson. It's not oh, happening, is it? Not happening, is it? Why not? Because I'm a bit stupid. Why, why, can't, why I can't, can't? I can't work it out. Can can't I? figure it out. How would you call someone normally? Well, normally I just pick up the phone and dial it. Sure. No, I don't I mean. It, <laughs> no, know. I mean. <laughs> but it's like I have a problem getting it through the desk. I tell you what, can I play an ad break and practice? Oh, <laughs> pretend this didn't happen, and then. Yeah, in a weird way, it's, it's like, like having Carl. Here. It's like having Carl. Play the ads. I'll get back to you. Excellent. Bit of Snoop. Never. And when did when did a bit of Snoop ever hurt anyone, Steve? Absolutely. Mm, never, right. I don't think. Okay. Carl's away. He pulled the wool over Claire's eyes. There's a few people out there that believed he was ill. I knew he wasn't. In fact, at one point I thought, maybe he is ill. Um, his message on his answer machine has changed in the last five minutes. And listen to it. And this is evidence that he's not ill, right? Okay. Don't like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, who don't we don't? Yeah. Anderson, yeah. Richard Anderson, I should just say, has, uh, yeah. has, uh, yeah. got in touch. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, oh, Claire! No, no, I can do it. Just tell All right. Anderson. This is ludicrous. Yeah, so uh, obviously Richard Anderson, he's, uh, he's emailed in his thoughts. Dickie Anders. <laughs> Anders, Anders. Randy yeah. Anders. Yeah. <laughs> Dickster. <laughs> Dickmeister Dick General. Dick Meister General. And he says there's something making... Have we got it, Claire? There's something, he says, there's something making strange yelping noises in the thicket at the end of my garden. Shall I go and prod it to see if it's calm? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I'm not in today, but not well on that. Um... No more rockbusters. I think that's what's affected me. It's got me down a bit. <laughs> so but, joking, um, yeah. The doctor said I'll, I'll be uh, back, swinging on my tyre in no time. So, see you later. so he was listening. He's clearly listening. He so he has was listening because we said about swinging on the tyre. Message at any time. Right, Carl, call me. In fact, I'll tell you what, we play a little game. Carl would appreciate this. Call, call me, Carl, or I'm going to give out your number. What's the first five or six digits, Claire? Well, it's o o seven nine six eight. O seven nine six eight. Okay. Phone now, Carl. Start calling now. Right, give the next number, Claire. Uh, it's, it's... You, you, you see, give the next number. One. Make one. note of this, because okay. if you want to call Carl yourself... O seven nine six eight, and the first number to be given out is one. He's not ill. He's... How do you feel now, Claire? Because he's made a fool of you, because well, no, you believed I mean, him. I mean, I actually he's felt made a really sorry for him yeah. last night. Um, but now, <laughs> past hour, I'm, I feel a little bit let down. Right, uh, right, okay, so we give a number out every five minutes until Carl calls, because we know he's listening now. He's having... He's taking a piss. Um, he's not here, obviously, you can hear that. He could... If it, that was as long as a link, so he could have been here. Um, he could he, definitely call. Um, Are we leaving so, this mess? Is this a message we're still leaving yeah, on his phone? Yeah. We're still leaving it. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> Good, yeah. Why um, don't we leave the rest of the show on his phone? Yeah. As a yeah. message. Leave, leave it up. He's got to yeah. listen through it all so he can delete it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, the other thing, of course, is that he's not going to get paid for this. No. So he, so he's thrown away 80 quid. <laughs> that's 80 right? pounds. Now, in Manchester, that's a week's wages, Easy. so he's obviously been spoiled. For, so for all his mank charm, he's down here, he's living the life of he riding. He thinks 80 quid's nothing. It, he thinks 80 quid's nothing. Or there you could be buying what you're, you could buying yourself a, your own horse. Yeah, you yeah. could probably get yourself a, a deposit on a flat. I was, I'd have thought so. Up I'd have thought Easy. so. Yeah, and so um, you know, on sun lamps because it's always dark. Yeah, he could he could he could go mental up there now. Dog so, string. So what what so what's the first few digits we've given out? 
07968. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's and then, the code. and then one. one. Okay, we'll give out, we'll give out, um, a number. number of calls for number <laughs> digits. So take that down, because we love calling him. Um, should we have a little bit of feed or something? Let me just yeah. tell you what, uh, what Dick has said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. he said, Richard Anderson, he also said, P.S. The show's still rubbish without Carl. <laughs> 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 still rubbish, still rubbish without Carl. Now, is that a compliment? It's still rubbish without Carl. Which suggests he thought it might be better with, without Carl? No, I think he's, he means it's equally rubbish. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, nothing Thanks. changes. Thanks, Dickers. Yeah, he's Beautiful nothing Dick Meister. That's Feeder, just the way I'm feeling, on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Well, he's defying me. He's not calling in. We're gonna give out his number and he's not calling in. That's even more annoying. What- who do you think he is? I don't know who he thinks he is. I- I'll tell you what he- I'll tell you who he is. Yeah. <laughs> he is a little bold Mancunian. Let's never That's let him forget that. I don't know who he thinks he is, but there's the fact. I, just, Carl, call in, cause you're annoying me and Steve. <laughs> He's been slagging you off as well, Steve. Well, go on, what's In the week, saying? you know, he was slagging you off. I mean, in the week I was joining in and laughing along, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna- I'm gonna- No, but now I'm thinking that you're more on my side than he is. Thanks very much, Rick. I'm glad to see you come round. <laughs> He said, he was, uh, I was in, uh, in the, in the, uh, pub with him and, um, uh, Johnny. Oh, right, so there's a little audience, good. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he went, oh, he went, have you seen Men in Black 2? I went, no. He said, have you, Johnny? He went, no. He went, oh, there's, there's a thing in it that looks just like Steve. Hmm. And I went, what? He went, it's a thing, it's got really gangly arms and, and, uh, uh, bulbous eyes and it just works really fast in the, uh, aliens registration thing. And I went, all right, I said, we'll bring that up Saturday. Since he's not here, you know, I th- what do you think of that? Well, I, I, j- I, <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason is that I think the problem I have with is this, that if, if I was to say things like that about Carl, I'd destroy him. I, I, he'd be a broken man after I'd finished with him. <laughs> Call in, Carl, or Steve's gonna say a few things about you. I'm gonna get a couple of home truths out there. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Yeah, we haven't. We, we were, uh, you know, at the time I was joining. We have been, you know, slagging you off on other things as well. Sure, sure. But now sure. I'm thinking maybe I, I maybe you were wrong. Maybe I was. Yeah, maybe I was taking the Mickey out of the wrong person behind their back. <laughs> Because the night from Patty Smith, co-written of course with uh, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, it was a co-write, was yes, it? I thought he wrote. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. there you go, learning something, learning something. <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Mickey Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. <laughs> no, Carl. Well, Carl's annoyed me. Um, he's not playing. He's not ill. Another digit um, from the number? Uh, yeah, just do one more digit, Claire. Are you serious? Sir? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Five. Good. five. So one five. Okay, great. We'll just we'll keep doing that. But I'll tell you what. The best revenge is living well. Indeed. Why don't we just do a brilliant remaining 50 minutes of, of show. Okay. And show the people that we don't need Carl. High five. Let's okay? Do it. You don't need Carl. Ooh, right. Let's uh, go. Starting now. Some there. brilliant, some brilliant stuff. Oh. <laughs> I was just, you gonna say something? Yeah. I yeah no, I, I remember when I was, I remember when I was growing up in Manchester. No, you can't. can't. I, oh, to, oh, to, oh, to, oh, it's funny to me. I'll tell you. XF um, one two point nine. I said no. <laughs> on, I saw a, a, a weird thing. I saw what was co- you know um, we're in Leicester Square. I was coming through. Chi- I saw a hairy Chinese kid. Mm, no, I don't. That's it, it was that's weird because they're not usually hairy, are they? E, did I tell you about me auntie Flora? <laughs> Is that See? supposed to be Manchester? Did I e by ek as like? Did I tell thee about me auntie Flora who shat herself for three hours once? Did I tell you? Oh, e, I don't. Uh, d- oh, there was a woman born. Carl, once. you have to phone us. We've Carl. got nothing. Oh, God, he's so annoying, little twat. That's the uh, new one from Blur. Uh, out of time. Only three now. Probably had a sort of Carl equivalent. Who sort of thought, well, I can't, I can't be bothered. Graham Cox and yeah. they're probably at home <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> exactly. Playing guitar and they're calling and say, well, you. You could pray along. You went, no, I'm ill. Yeah. Oh, I'm ill. Come on, Graham. Just, if you're <laughs> just playing, I, I can hear you playing guitar now. No. No, I'm ill. Yeah. Have they replaced Coxon? No. They haven't no. replaced him? No. Oh, right. Well, they probably will do when they go on tour, but I think they aren't interested. Yeah. Well, I, I play guitar. I don't know. <laughs> That's true enough. You're pretty hot so, on the, uh, If, uh, Run, you want someone to, uh, Oh, actually, Steve, in, in, in answer to your question, for the live dates, uh, it's one of the blokes from The Verve. Oh, Ex-Verve, remember? Did she interrupt me again? I Sorry, think so. 
I'm a fear oh in it. God, I can't I think I, think I was that. talking. Yeah, I don't no. know if you were, uh, you know, I'm a, I might be mental, but I think I was talking. <laughs> Claire, wh when's your radio show on? <laughs> well, when do you host a radio show? Am I allowed to plug it? Go on, yeah, go on. Just tell us. Monday to Thursday, 9pm. Well, maybe, maybe we're coming along and start talking well, over I, you. No, I'm just wondering, Rick, I'm just wondering, who's listening at that time? My I mean, what's a, we, we, we've got a prime time which everyone is sat at home listening on a Saturday afternoon, Claire. Yeah. It's one of the best radio yeah, slots no in the business. Yeah, no one's going to football matches or shopping or anything like that. No, 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 no. I want a piece of the action. I need it. Yes. I need well, it. Well, you've got it. And, uh, they're, um, they're playing a few, um, dates here and there. Old Blur. Old yeah. Blur. <laughs> Good. We'll and that's off their new album, probably, with all the other songs <laughs> and yeah. that. Rick, I was watching TV last night. I just, sure. um, I think it might have been during the monkey show, actually, I'm not sure, but there was an advert and it reminded me of a little crush that I just felt I should express. Because I wonder if, you know, I've often used the platform in the past to just express my feelings for people. Yeah. And I've, I realised now, for many, many years, I've had a big crush on the Scottish Widow from the Scottish Widow adverts. But she's, I, I just, I just want to say to her, you know, is it because she's sort of mysterious and hooded? Partly that. It's also because I know, I guarantee she's available. Because she's just lost she's her husband. A widow. Yeah. And I just think it's time to stop grieving. I think you've been grieving too long. I think, I want to say to her, you're a beautiful lady. That and she's probably, and she's probably, she's probably got a big lump sum. I'm thinking she's probably got a sizable amount of cash. Yeah. She's obviously got a lot of spare time on her hands, not working or raising kids because she's wandering across the moorlands. Yeah, the her kids are probably show. grown up. I'm thinking it's time or, to- Or, that, or they turn to crack or something. But I'm just saying this, I think it's just time to say, yes, he was a great man. He was a good man. He was a lovely guy. He worked but hard he's gone. His it's he's time gone. to move on. He wouldn't want to see you like this. No. Still grieving after 25 years. No, he'd want, he'd want to see her being humped by a big lanky thing with steamed up glasses, I reckon. I'll be honest with you, he hasn't got much to say in the matter. He's dead. Well, all right, don't get nasty. And she's, frankly, she's still not she over is it. squandering that money. She could be out, she could be in Europe, she could be um, in Barbados or Hawaii, she could be spending that cash, she could get, she could lose the hooded short and maybe slip into a nice bikini. Do you know what? I think she's, she's wearing, kept herself in shape. I reckon she's wearing nothing under that. That's shroud. what I'm thinking. Dirty. Slut. And I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming as she's Scottish, uh, that he was a little bit thrifty. She couldn't wait for him to go. She couldn't wait for the poor bloke to go. He was obviously, I bet he was a little bit thrifty. He's probably got quite a lot stashed away that she's slowly working away through. Yeah. And I'm, oh, I wanna Ding find dong. out, I wanna find out how he died. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Cause if, cause if I find it's like, oh, it's, it, there, was a, there, there was a roller skate on the top of the stairs, <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna reopen the investigation. If it was in any way suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Questions. So, your husband's dead asked. and she went, oh no, where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> Steve Absolutely. Merchant's outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Built like a donkey. Yeah. He's built like a chi- he's built like Oliver the chimpanzee. Yeah, and he wants to get at it. Yes. He's so, bought his tandem. He's <laughs> yeah, hop on the back. We're going off to the moors. Yeah. He's tr he's gonna fly executive class. <laughs> yeah. His passport is valid. <laughs> I know he that. Knows that much. He's got another ten years on the passport. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what, the boys from Blur, they don't rock. Sure. Should we show them how to rock with a bit of bad company? It. It's a classic. Turn it up, Claire. Bad company. Can't get enough of your love. I'm in a rock mood because yeah, Carl's made my blood boil. Yeah. Really. I mm. might even play a song, you're probably too young, called, uh, Spirit of the Radio by Rush. It's sort of like, for rockers, a bit like that, it's like the ultimate sort of pomp, uh, rock, progressive pop song ever. Uh -huh. It's, it's, uh -huh. it's classic. Yeah, you, can, you can, you can, you you might hate it, or you'll love it, um, or you listen to it ironically. I love it. Well, you know, I, I just, I, I was listening to Led Zeppelin recently. I never really understood the rock phenomenon before, but I just understand it now. It just gets in your blood. It's yeah. extraordinary. Crank yeah. it up loud and it is just visceral and amazing. And, uh, I wish I could play the guitar. Sure. Do you know what I feel like doing? What? Writing a little sort of hymn or a ballad. About to Carl? To Carl. Yeah. We've tried threatening him. That's not worked. Give out one more digit. We got half hour to go. Right, because there's three digits. So it's O, what is it? O? O7968. Yeah. One five. Next digit, please. Seven. Okay, one five right. seven. I Excellent. hope you're making a note of that. You'll be able to phone Carl, leave messages, tell him what you think of him. Uh, unless he phones. He can stop this at any time by just simply calling him. He, he can just call and say, okay, don't. Uh, uh, he can just call and say, please don't give my number out. And I go, as I always do when I'm winding him up and I'm slapping his head and I'm sort of like spitting on him and stuff, eventually he goes, shout, stop it, and I go, well, you only had to ask. Exactly. So if he calls, I go, you only had to ask. Yeah. Flaming lips.
on, uh, XFM 104.9. Well, we got through it without Carl. I think so, yeah, I've enjoyed myself. Didn't mention him much, did we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think we need him. I always quite enjoy it when he's absent, actually. I, I like know, because, fairy. yeah, because we can have a nice chat as opposed to yeah. him just going, you remember when I had Chinese air and they were old women yeah. eating their own legs it's and the dad a put thing, a Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Claire pr brings a certain kind of level of class to it, dare I say that, you know. She, yeah. She's inept in her own way. In her own way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, know, there's geez. no one, oh no, no, there's no, there's no one any good working no, out. I mean, no, 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 I don't no, want to no, 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 there's no, there's no, like, proper, uh, I, 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 from the only proper DJ is probably Camfield, yeah. I'd have thought, because he's been, he's, he's, Nearly thirteen now, and he's been in the <laughs> yeah. he's been in the radio twelve and a half years. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, he took they, they tested him, and he's half human, half van. <laughs> yeah. Which is <laughs> which is quite yeah. He's got quite weird. a lot of. I think he's got the forty eight chromosomes. Yeah. That Tommy Vance has got. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, makes one Tommy Vance. Yeah, Tommy Vance, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a little bit extra. Yeah, well, because one of those chromosomes is pure Jack Daniels. Well, yeah, it's yeah. It's just Jack Daniels chromosome. It's, it, it well, corresponds yeah, yeah. exactly to a and Jack there's, Daniels. And there's some, uh, Lemmy genes, <laughs> exactly. I think you'll find. In there as well. In there. But, um, uh, although, I'll tell you what, I, I share with Camfield a, a, a couple of loves. Um, I, I agree that one of the greatest programmes of all time is Columbo. Columbo is brilliant. It is. Amazing. Yep. And uh, they're, they're showing them all. There's so many channels showing them now. I think Granada Plus show them. I think BBC show them. Yep. I think I, uh, everyone's got a bit I of it. I think he's made, um, 18,000 episodes, apparently. Are they still making them, though? Uh, I think no, they keep I th turning they, up. No, they did in the 90s. They're, they're not quite as good, but I think the original ones, they're great. He's got this great character, and I share that with him. I, you know, I do like a bit of rock. I th should we play Rush? It's just oh, spirit of the yeah, radio. I mean, yeah. we get we get canned by people who like new metal and Blur and that and, the, and those t trendy bands, all that the yeah. kids bands and yeah, that. But you it? think this is pure? Yeah, I pure don't think rock. this would feature in X-ray magazine. We've got some great bands in them. They've got Kaloop, they've got <laughs> Demp, they've got Flap Nibble coming out with their new single. It's an EP yeah. and uh, Strep, the oh, early, excellent. not the not the latest Strep, no. the early Strep, the unrecorded years, which is the only ones I like by Strep. And uh, that guy in it, you know, the, the drummer Kibble, he's gone. He's got his own going fringe. He, he's in for a chat uh, with Christian on the breakfast show, where you could win a trip to O'Neill's in Camden. <laughs> this is Rush. <laughs> Rush and Spirit of the Radio, <laughs> everything in that. <laughs> let's look quick. Let's put every type of music. Okay, go to reggae, into rock. Okay, look, opera, opera. <laughs> go, go mental now. Go mental on the drums. Double that. Double the. How many? How many bass drums have you got? Just the one. Go mental on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It is obscene. That is everything in that, isn't it? <laughs> how long is it? Like four and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That's that's lovely. They should def people don't play music like that that's anymore. Only, there's only three of them. I just Is there think only three of them. Yeah, there's that. And just w one day in Canada. Yeah, they just went right. We might, we're, let's make, we won't even write one single. Yeah. So let's put every type of music <laughs> exactly, into that yeah. single. It's almost like a Stars on 45. Yeah. Version of music of yeah. all time. Of, 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 of every, every music rock. they've heard. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty Pretty good, are they it? still going? Do they still play? Catch, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But that was for Camfield. There was Bad Company there and Rush for Camfield. Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Camfield as well. The A Team. <laughs> Do you remember once when we were talking about the A team, and I was slagging it off on your show in the old XFM. Yeah, yeah. And I was going, I, I mean, the, the, I quite like the A team, but it is too, it's sometimes it's too far fetched to enjoy without it being ironic or it being for kids. And, um, I, I could hear fuming from outside. I could feel him <laughs> going, <laughs> 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 he didn't know who to call. He wanted to call Vance or someone or Lemmy. He didn't know, <laughs> right? And then I, I, I said, um, and uh, if you can't find the, 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 you know, find the A-team, they, out, they outwit the might of the FBI every single week, but an old woman who's having trouble with her landlord can find them. Yeah. And the door burst <laughs> open <laughs> and Campy went, that is because Hannibal sometimes disguises himself as an elderly Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. And that was his explanation for yeah. the whole series. Yeah. Oh, that was for Camfield. That's lovely. That's for his 12th birthday, which is coming yeah, up very soon. Oh, he's 13, 13. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna rock, Steve. Indeed. Oh, the phone's going. Play that, break a lance. Oh, it might be Carl. Oh. Well, here's a bit of a turn up for the books. Carl Pilkington on the line. Right. Yeah, where you been? I'm, I'm off there, aren't I? Right. Okay, what's the matter with you? 
just um, just a bit bunged up and that, and got the shakes, got that sort of that shaky thing to get. Yeah, that's because you didn't eat last time when Suzanne was at work. Yeah, well, I think that's what brought it on. Plus, she was away in the week and I put some wet jeans on. <laughs> And that's, I think that's what's caused the problem. Well, when did you put them? On your head? No, they were just on the maiden and the, the legs felt dry, but they were- Just on the what? On the what? Have you I've got, got the maiden? maiden? What was she doing there? <laughs> what do you mean? On the maiden that you put clothes on. What? You your clothes, clothes horse. Maiden. Your clothes horse. Well, yeah. Right, okay, so you put wet jeans on, yeah? So, uh, that's why I'm ill on that. I've right. been having a good time, I've been watching the football. So you're just sitting at home watching telly, where you could have been sitting here? Well, I would have been better off there, because I've got a chair there. <laughs> I've got no chair at home at the moment, because I sold it last week. <laughs> Why did you sell a chair? I what, you only have one chair? chair? What? Look, can't we just, um, I just was calling up to let you know I was alright and that. We're not interested in that, we want to know about the chair. <laughs> I sold it, I had a little two-seater, and I, I sold it because I'm getting a new one, but I've got to wait another month. So, so you've got to all sit on the floor for so a month. So you sold a chair before you had another one? Well, she might not have wanted to buy it in a, in a month or something. So I got rid of it whilst I could. She was alright, buddy. We'll talk about that next week. There's, there's oh, you're gonna be in next week? I look forward to that then. That's a dynamite piece of radio to tune in for. The yeah. day Carl sold a chair. Brilliant. Alright. So you alright then? It's going alright? But why did you take this long to call? We asked you to call since the because very beginning. We've been that. phoning you. Why is your phone yeah, in such I heard, I heard the beginning. I, I heard the beginning of the show, I thought, yeah, it's going alright, the there and stuff. Turned it off. Um, you fact, turned it off? No, no, I put a tape in though, because even though I'm ill, I'm still showing an interest in it. Well, you're not, um, if you're watching football and shaking. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll listen back to it later, so I hope you haven't been dissing me. No. Right? no. Definitely not. Don't listen back to it, it's not worth it, but we haven't been dissing yeah. you, no. And uh, I've just been watching, uh, Football, right? Did you watch the monkey program last night? You told us to watch yeah. the monkey program. We all stayed and watched the monkey program. Alright, wasn't it? Was rubbish, wasn't it? Obviously, obviously not half chimp, half human. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they missed out a lot of the, the interesting bits. They didn't have any interesting bits. Those are the bits that you made up to make no, it more the interesting. Bits, the bits that I told you about about three months ago before they decided to make the program. Yeah. What were the bits that you came up with? Well, they, they missed out the bits about, uh, you know, the zookeeper. Right, there wasn't a zookeeper, yeah, go on. Well, there was, but they left that bit out. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, fine. Out, and they left, and they, they left out the bit where it ran from there? <laughs> in I'll 1975? In terms of the, those that did research, they actually went and filmed it, you read it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are you're the one with the facts wrong. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, I think they also left out the bit when it jumped over three double-decker buses on a, <laughs> yeah. motorbike. Yeah, on Evil Knievel's motorbike. Yeah. So, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Not only do you not bother turning up, but you turn off the radio and start watching football. Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it off, but I've, I've recorded it. I'll listen back later and, and sort of tell Well, what you. good is that? Sort of, I, I like to keep, you know, keep it in shape and that. I'll have a word next week. All right. If you receive any phone calls from people you don't know, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Instantly, we don't know why. Why that is happening? That is just going to be a weird, spooky <laughs> thing. So and, and don't bother telling the story about um, Men in Black Two either, because I don't think people would be interested. Um, uh, actually, on the subject of Steve, Men in Black Two, <laughs> what? Have you seen that, Steve? No, I haven't, Carl. Tell oh, me about you it. You should see it. Go on. Why? Because there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing in it. <laughs> Go on. Uh, what a stupid, bold Mancunian tosser. No, weirder than that. <laughs> There isn't anything weirder than that. Hey guys, it was gangly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. And uh, you've got to see it because you wouldn't believe out the likeness and that. You've got to see it out tonight. Right. It's not as weird, it had a normal voice, right? <laughs> He's not even here! I'll tell you what, mate, it ain't worth coming in next week. <laughs> oh! Oh, stay on the line, Carl. Play a record player. Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers. What do you think of that, Carl? Alright. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Another I'll tell you what, four remarks. Steve is not a, a fan now. Not only does he know you've been slagging him off behind his back. No, I wasn't slagging like Steve. If you get it out on the DVD tonight, you'll know I'm not slagging you off. It could be your brother. <laughs> 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 I love the fact that he, it makes it worse, but he's thinking, you're gonna go, oh, he wasn't slagging me off, it does look like me. I do think I'm an alien. 
I love the fact that you hope Steve will go, he's got a point. It's the, it's, no, it's the spitting image. Yeah. I am, seriously, Carl, I'm really angry. I'm so angry with you at the moment. You haven't seen it yet. No, I know, because I know what it's gonna be and I'm just- I'm Why? What's, what's, I'll tell you why I'm angry, because he doesn't do it in jest. No, but what do you think it's gonna look like? What do you think this thing's gonna look like? Gonna look ludicrous. It's not gonna look anything like me, but no, he's I'm gonna, like, pretend it does. does. Go on, what? Go on. No, it does look like you. Yeah. yeah, of course it does. And you looked like the, uh, human Z. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, you did a bit, Carl. You walked like him, you bowled like him, you got a sort of gormless face like him. <laughs> Any more? I don't smoke. That does. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you, I'm not well on that. <laughs> oh, you're not well. What exactly is wrong with you, you whinger? Well, uh, it's just, do you know, like I, I always tell you about the, um, restless leg syndrome I've got. <laughs> it's like yeah. that, all over. So you're <laughs> just shaking around the house? I'm just, yeah. What do you look like, Elvis? What are you doing, you're shaking around the I'll house? I'll tell you, with your bald head, you probably look like an enormous vibrator. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> That's what you probably look like if you shoot <laughs> naked. Oh, you'll have a Scottish widow coming round. Oh, dear. That's, what's the name, by the way? I heard you talking about that. That's, um... Amanda Lamb. Amanda Lamb, who's in the Place in the Sun programme. Is she actually a widow? <laughs> Is she a Scottish widow? Uh, just, just, uh... <laughs> man, my husband's dead. <laughs> Do you want any money and a bit of my clam? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right. That's the sort of uh, quality you've missed out on today. Well, anyway, you're going to be back next week. I can't, we, we we need you back next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you know? Also, how did you know you were going to be ill today? Because you phoned and arranged this yesterday. Convenient. And I yeah, spoke to you yesterday, and you didn't sound very ill. I felt ropey yesterday. You've got a bit of a bunged up nose. Even though yeah, I have a bit of a bunged up nose. Ill, I still sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a little bit sweaty. Paul, oh, sorting out does not out. mean you phone up Sturgis and send her down. That's not sorting it out, that's making things worse. <laughs> Have you learnt nothing? Thanks, Claire. If you're not part of the solution, you're part no, of the right, problem. Mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, I'm a little, my leg's a little bit achy. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing wet jeans. Oh, I put wet jeans on again. Oh, I'm a bit, oh, my lasagna wasn't, it was frozen. Can you hear the venom and hatred in our, in our voices today? We genuinely are upset and angry with you. Yeah. Can't believe it. I cannot believe that you'd, I mean, oh. Right, well the thing is, th th we'll be back to normal next week, right? We've got Billy Elliot doing the film next week. Right. Uh. Any prizes? Got some good stuff. Have you got any films with Burt Reynolds in to give away on VHS? And we'll, uh, I'll see you then. Great, we're looking forward to it already. I'll see you later. All see right. you later. Hot, hot, heat. Bandages, XFM, we're off, innit? That's it, it's all over. Yeah, it. back next week. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Bye. Total yeah. respect. Yeah, yes. Nice Keep it real. See ya. XFM. <laughs>